what's up what's up it's the arthur most experience with deke i'm arthur most and that's my main man deke what's good bro bro everything's good today man i am one day closer deke one day closer to my toes being in the sand i get a chance to sit next to drippy deke once again today we got a legit guest pull it up what is the day too bro definitely excited about that one man you know out the blue i came out of left field with it the midnight text but it's like yo i'm just it's, it's a good day today bro i got a chance to throw my stillers jacket but i'm happy today bro couldn't get bell so why not get the guy that blocked come him, on right? man hey, hey look one pro bowler to another pro bowler all right it's like all right that pro bowler a little busy all right let's get this pro bowler in all right but either way and man. rosie's pro bowl was legit oh, no, he, 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 he about that. half of these pro bowl bids that happened big facts recently big facts he he does Garner have a legit, made legit. The pro bowl this year yeah, he's definitely legit, legit, bro. My Absolutely. God. But yeah, man, I'm excited, bro. Definitely excited, like I said, to talk to the homie, man, Rosie Nix. Um, you know, both posts, you know, old stuff, new stuff, current stuff, or oh, oh, everything in between, man. So no, I'm definitely excited about that, man. Um, let me think, man, what else we got going on, baby? Like I said, I'm super excited about my D, it's almost time, bro. It's almost toes in the sand time. It's almost unplugged time, bro. We That's almost good. there, man. We almost there. So. Happy for you. I'm happy for you too, man. Hey, uh, Tyler from the three three four appreciates Nick's, but is wondering where the nausea interview is. Ooh. Can we do a nausea interview? <laughs> See, the problem is of of between this version, it's it's gonna be like some tension. I feel like potentially, and then you know the other one. He he yeah he he didn't made the block all the way hot. All right, so we're going to look into that. But, yeah, that might be some – wait, it was time heals all wounds. Just, just give some time. Just, just give some time. Because, yeah, he might have been traded and shipped off multiple times. Well, he shouldn't be listening to podcasts anyway. <laughs> but this is he 2024, be, bro. You shouldn't be paying attention to media. It's 2024, man. We, we can't tell him what he can and can't do. I mean, he's 2024, baby. That might be part I'm giving of him how advice. He, I mean, I'm just giving him advice. That might be how he unwinds. He's like, let me just turn on a nice still podcast. That's not wise. Here's some, some, some positive energy, some good takes. You know what I'm saying? like, you know what, maybe I can hear this and then come and bring us in the building. Maybe that's why he does it, man. Mm-hmm. That's not wise. <laughs> not a great strategy. <laughs> not at all. But it's our job to give takes. I got to call it like I see. Hey, this is true, man. Hey, this is true. If he's gotten offended by some hey. of the things I've uh, talked about in the past, about his running style and mm-hmm. what he's contributed to the offense, I mean, it is what it is. Right. There, there we go. There we go. Yeah. I wasn't the only one saying it. I was far from the only one saying it, actually. Hey, hey. You can't minimize your role just because you're in the group, okay? That's what you were just trying to do right there. He was like, I was the only one who said it. Just remember, I was the only one. It wasn't just me. It ain't go bad about them if he's talking to us, though, because he could be like, Deke, I know you said it. I see you do it. I've had some strong this, support for Najee, though, too. Let's not forget this that. This is true. This is very true. And, and that's the one thing I will say, bro. You'll go at them hard, but you also will, 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 will you know, when it's time for flowers, you, you do give them the flowers when they're supposed to be given to them. So I do appreciate that. I'm sure he appreciates that as well, bro. Right. Yeah, he definitely appreciates that, bro. Absolutely. Well, uh, you ready for this black history fact? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But before we get to the fact, I, I just I got to make sure I do this every day leading up to it. All right. On the front end. So I don't forget. All right. Because, you know, I forget, bro. We got two giveaways going on. Right. We got one giveaway going on right now on the Steelers channel. Right. You seen the video drop the other day. All right. We're doing the or I'll announce the giveaway next uh, Thursday. Excuse me for that one. We'll announce the video next Thursday and it's or the next the winner in a video next thursday don't know we probably won't do a live that day because we'll be traveling back but planning on friday we'll have a nice little schedule for you i'll let y'all know what's happening and stuff like that but um make sure to check out the giveaway that we got going on on the steelers channel right here man um terrible towel signed autograph picture in the book um like i said man check that out it's easy to submit to participate in the contest man to potentially win some of that cool stuff all right so definitely check that out and then also for the sneaker heads out there because i know we can't all you know Join the, the 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 NFL love that I share with multiple places. So I get it. I get it. But sneakers. Sneakers, oh, that's different. You can't be for no sneakers. You got blue sneakers, red sneakers, black sneakers, gold sneakers, every sneaker. That don't matter. All right? So on the Steelers, you know, this is what we're talking right here. But on the sneaker page, kicking it with most, got a giveaway going on over there, man. Giving away a pair of Air Jordan 1 mids, uh, the Magic Embers. All right? So check that out as well, man. Seeing some of y'all already over there. Salute y'all. But definitely check that out also, man. So I'll be announcing that one later on next month, all right? But appreciate y'all on all the content and all the interaction and all that good stuff as well. 
But now with that being the case, I got that out the way. I didn't check that box off. Deek, what you got for me, baby? Deek, thoughts, Deek, thoughts. Let's ride. That's a good one. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I like how you said this is a good one. Like the other ones haven't been good. The three nipple was fire. All right. Absolutely fuego, man. Well, I've been slacking man. a little bit on Black History Month. I think I'm well, missing a day or two. It's, it's potential. It's potentially missing a day or two. But 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 your, your your intentions are good. I like your intentions. Right. A day in celebration. How Stevie Wonder helped establish MLK Day as a national holiday. Oh, do tell, because I love Stevie. Come on, man. Love me some Stevie. So, Martin Luther King, famed civil rights activist. Yeah. Assassinated okay, in 1968, and there was a campaign to mark his birthday, January 15th, as a national holiday, and it, that began not long after. But mm -hmm. despite the widespread effort, the holiday wasn't signed into law until 1983 and wasn't officially observed for the first time in 1986. Hmm. So in 1980, Stevie Wonder, already a veteran creator of social justice-minded music, Gave the campaign a boost with the Happy Birthday song. Happy it was released as a single in the UK yeah. in 1981. Birthday. It wasn't a single Happy in the US birthday. in 1981. I guess it was just part of the album. Yeah. But it was an unfiltered rebuke of the MLK Day opponents and a contagious celebratory anthem. The song quickly became <sighs> sort of a rallying cry for the campaign. <laughs> Yo. So yeah, shortly after that, it was so signed into law in 1983, but was officially observed in 1986. So Stevie's happy birthday song was really a beef song. Yeah. That's crazy. Because the happy birthday song was a vibe. So here's one of the lyrics. You know it doesn't make much sense. There ought to be a law against anyone who takes offense at the day in your celebration. Oh, he's so he lyrical. Talk, he yeah, brought he him up. he was talking about MLK there. How have I missed this? And I've heard this song like too many times, bro. Like legit, we'll see like the regular happy birthday song. We'll sing the Go to Cry birthday song. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, this is Mr. Day. All right. And then we'll come back and hit you with the happy birthday. To ya. Happy birthday. Yeah. So, yeah, bro. I, dude, I like that, man. Shout out to Martin Luther the King, baby. Y'all know what time he on, man. Martin Luther the King, Julia. What time? What time? MLK. Deke, that was actually dope right there, bro. That's dope. That, that's what we call thought provoking. Deek thoughts. One time. Hit that like button for Deek thoughts. Hit that like button. Y'all see what time we on? Thought it was a good one. Y'all see what time we on? He not playing today. Might be the best one. Look, bro. If Although you, the woman who created the security system. That, that was, was tough, too. Pretty intriguing. That was pretty tough. But I will say, with everything, you know, the timing of it, it just feels right. We got Rosie pulling up on us today, Deke. You feel me? Now, you broke out the fire hat last time. This time you broke out a fire fact, bro. I like <laughs> that, man. Start provoking. Like, it's provocative. You know, it gets people going. So... Shout out, bro. Shout out. But uh, trying to think, man. Any uh, any plans for you, man? You you recovered from your hot date wherever you was at yesterday on Valentine's Day, <laughs> Lover's Day. Yeah, I'm doing good. All right, nice and relaxed. I see. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, not too many plans. I, I'm okay. I'm gonna take after you, dude. I know you're going away for the vacation, but I'm yeah. I'm gonna be steady relaxing for the next week, week and a half. Respect. I think Respect. March things will start cranking back up. That's when you hit him with it. The... It, yeah, it, turn it up a little bit. Just I need it. Hey, yeah. hey man, I, I dig it, bro. I dig it. He like said I, I had to hard just create my own. I just needed to, yeah. So I appreciate everybody being on the same page with this jankiness. But yeah, man, sometimes I just got to get the toes in the sand. I just need it. So I just you know we're gonna unplug, and after that we bat like we never left. So it'll be a good time, man. That's be a good time. But um, yeah, man, it's gonna be a good day today, bro. So um, if you're ready, we go ahead and. Get this show started like how we always do. Because the homie Rosie Nix, 430 today. We gonna talk to him. Can't wait, all right? So go ahead, drop it in the comment section where you are tuning in from. And in that way, we you we will give you those big boy shout outs to start today's show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got Stan Claire tuning in from No, never mind. He threw me off here. He said 828. He was just talking to 828 stuff. Oh, for sure, for sure. Shout out to 828, though. Yeah. yeah shout out to 828. Q, 610, Allentown, PA. Q, what it do? And shout out to Allentown also, baby. Yes, indeed. Rob Dollars from the 330, Youngstown, Ohio. Southside, mm -hmm. baby. I like how you switch it up. He ain't sharing the line no more. No. He said, but we Southside. 
Must have moved. Man, you must know. Uh, what was my two chains? Two chains south side over there and everything, man. Let's go. Cookie Monster, 610, Reading, PA. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shout out to Reading one time. Uh, John Easton from the 412 Crafting. Compare Mitch's stats and win loss record with the Bears versus Fields. Ooh, there he is. Comparing and contrast. I like it. I like it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mook 984 from the 479, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Fayetteville. Shout out. Shout out. 828 Style is tuning in from the 828, Hickory, North Carolina. You know he's tapping in Hickory. He's saying Come he's on. making black history for himself. Let's go. Let's go. Now, wait a minute, Deke. Um, huh. So you, 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 you travel yesterday? Uh, no. You ain't, you ain't fly nowhere? You ain't take the PJ? Fly? No. Huh. It's interesting. You know, I was just looking through the chat, you know. I see Leah Warren. Shout out to Leah. Leah, you know, fan favorite, always on the show. Yeah. Specifically, it's talking to you, though. It says Deke. Address you. Deke. Capital D. Shout out to Deke. Comma. I had fun <laughs> on our date yesterday in the 254. Now, Leah, is, is she like I said, she's rocking with the show heavy. <laughs> I'm very familiar with the 254 exclusively because of her. So I know that's Colleen, Texas, Deke. So you was in Texas yesterday, bro? What you was doing in Texas, man? You put her get some brisket. We you get some barbecue, man? What you want, bro? You get the baby back ribs? Uh huh? What's going on, bro? Because I know Leah. Leah. Leah is a truther. She's not a she's not a storyteller. She's a truther. Okay. So if she said you was in the two five four. I'm a believer. So deep. Time you get back, bro. Time you fly back. That's what I'm trying to figure out, bro. What time you get back here today? Uh, that's what you want the four o'clock start. I get it now. He was like, I was like, yo, do you want to bump the show? Then he's like, no, bro. Keep it at four, bro. Keep it at four. I'm like, all right, you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. So that's what's going on, huh? So your baby mama want enough, your side chick want enough. You had to fly away to clean Texas and chill with Leah. That's what you doing, man. I guess, yeah, Leah's getting in the mix here. I, I'm I just, <laughs> bro. This is what Leah said, bro. This is what Leah said, man. Honest Leah. I like honest Leah. All right, that's what she said though. So I'm just trying to figure out, Deke. I thought we had a better relationship. I thought that you would, you know, say if you was just flying out, bro, we could have gave you the whole weekend, oh, bro. If that was the case, man, I didn't want you to rush your time into two five four. Man. Right. Uh, <laughs> Is Leah trying to? Uh, She's a truther, bro. That's fill the it. void of uh, Stephanie Ramirez being gone. Uh, hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> is that what's going on? It went from Stephanie to Love It Mattered. It was like, yo, is this the same person? How we switch up to this? I love it though. I love it. But apparently, man, y'all passed that, but man. I, 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 I'm, you, flattered. Yeah. I'm flattered. I'm flattered. Yeah, man. Respect though, bro. Respect. Sh- shout out to Leah, man. Shout out to Leah. You know it's all love. Appreciate uh, yeah, you. I'm, I'm flattered for, I guess, uh, my company being welcomed. Yeah. Uh, but also the fact that she thinks I have that type of money to be flying private jets like that listen, over the place. Listen, Taylor Swift took the PJ from Japan back to Vegas. I know you're going to take the PJ from Dago and Pittsburgh to Texas, bro. We ain't tripping, man. <laughs> you could do that one. That's right. That, that, bam, bam, bro. That's a way quicker trip, bro. Did you borrow her jet or did you take the other one she sold? I, it's one of the ones, bro. That's the cheaper flight, though, Pittsburgh to Texas, bro. So I know you did that, bro. I ain't even tripping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh... Quan Summer from the 828 as well. <laughs> shout out, shout out. The 828 is in the building today. Let's get it. X Concepts, tuning in from Claridge, PA, 724. And he's saying, uh, I don't need the money to uh, pick up checks. I was going to say, you know, you're a rock star, Deke. I, I, you know, like the, the way the taco meat just jumps off your chest, man, it just screams, manly man. And you see how the ladies just gravitate to you, bro. It's crazy. But I like the fact that you're a gentleman, though. You don't abuse it. You're a gentleman. And that's that's big-time respect to you, bro. Big-time respect. Uh, Even if you do catch the PJ on a Wednesday, at, you walked out. It was about 7 o'clock. So I'm, yeah, I guess you flew out about 8, 830. Maybe you were straight there. I don't know, bro. I don't know. But, yeah, man. You know, very respectable. Yeah, You don't mind traveling. I like that, bro. But. You got to see the world. Mano from the big 413 Steelers, Massachusetts. Hashtag fire jacket modes. Oh, no, I appreciate you, man. Look, I broke it out because we talked to my dog today, all right? We talked to my dog today, so I'm excited about it. And I figured the other, you know, if it was bad luck. So we figured we wait until next time. Because we so we got to, you know, run it back with L Bell. So we're going to use same hat. I'm going to have the same outfit on. We're going to see if that works out. Oh yeah, yeah. And Forgot if not, about then that. it's cursed. Then we ain't gonna mess with it no more. You had a manscape shirt. Yeah, I had the manscape on. You had the fresh. Uh, you had the hat. Was it Pitt? No, you had a Fire Steelers one. I thought, right? No, I had that Pitt hat. It yeah. was Pitt. Okay, yeah, I was, was, that was one of them. Yeah, blue and yellow one. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, 
So we're going to run that back, same outfits and everything. They ain't going to know what happened. They'll think it's the same day. No. Yanni, 703 Nova. Shout out to Northern Virginia. One time for the culture. One time, one time. And um, you know what? We'll end it with the homie, Tyler LaQuadra in the 216. He says, Cleveland, dot, 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 unfortunately, with the trash can emojis, man. He's throwing it away. But you know what? It's all love. We appreciate you being over there because it doesn't matter where you're located at, man. You, you're just spreading the gospel of Steelers, okay? So we appreciate you. Even if you are behind enemy lines, man, do the good work, okay? Do the good work. Let's get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, let's hit some of these supers before yeah, uh, Rosie man. calls in. DKB17 joined the upper room. Shout out to DKB17 and welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Q, Motes, I need you to check out Cedric Gray, linebacker oh, from UNC. Cedric. I like him a lot. If you haven't yeah. checked him out, he's a stud. Mm-hmm. Could really be our Shazier replacement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we already hit Q. Trust me. We on the same page. I've been eyeing Cedric Gray. I like him a lot um, when I get back from my siesta. Yeah, he definitely on my short list of, all right, let's start getting him. Let's start learning a lot more and more about him. But um, from what I've seen, man, definitely rangy, um, impactful player, explosive player, productive player. So, no, I definitely liked him a lot, man. Absolutely. We on the same page. And for certain, he fits that Shazier model, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be a good coverage guy for us. Yeah. Again, from what I saw from UNC, I I thought he needed to work on his tackling a Mm -hmm. little bit. But it looked like he did a decent job in the senior board. Yeah. But and I will definitely also someone in the third too. round. I, I would like, I would love. Yeah, and I reiterate, man. Um, you know, tackling is something that you can improve upon. We saw Patrick Peterson improve upon his tackling at points this season. It does take effort. It does take, you know, that JPJ. Yeah, he's another one, man. Like we've seen certain <laughs> ones where it was like, okay, are you hurting yourself? JPJ was terrible, bro. It, it was like that was some of the worst I've yeah. ever seen, to be honest. But it got better though. It did, it yeah, got better. yeah, absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. It's like we saw Mink at one point. We used to get on him. It's like, yo, yeah, man, you can be better with this. Career. But it's like, yo, you can't improve that. It is a mentality. But after that, man, the technique and fundamentals, like he's more than athletic enough, man. So I'm not overly concerned with that part. But yeah, that that is that is legit though. Jeff H, did we ask TG about Zach Frazier from West Virginia? We did not, but, man, Zach Frazier definitely on the short list also, man, in terms of entry offense linemen that could be, you know, bringing him in to help us out or even improve certain situations, man. So, yeah, without a doubt, he's definitely one of the names I'm familiar with, man. I, I didn't know if you, you felt like he's a West Virginia dude, bro. Uh, as long as he helps the Steelers, I don't oh, care. Oh, respect, respect. Uh, I pray TG's response to that, though, is like, who? <laughs> He doesn't even know who the guy is. <laughs> he probably would, because he, he old lineman, bro. Yeah, he probably, who, who's, who's this guy? He's like, yo, Zach Frazier, all right, bro. He's nice. He's straight. I like him. He going to hit you. Yeah. Nah, I think I'll know who he is, though. Yeah. He's too highly ranked as a prospect. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> he'll, know, he'll know at least something to give us. Give us a little cliche yeah. or something. Let's get you dub. says, Bears released Eddie Jackson. Pair him with Minka. Oh, I missed the releasing of Eddie Jackson. I just got that long, drawn-out wow. Adam Schefter tweet of the Seattle Seahawks have informed Geno Smith that the bonus money that was going to be officially guaranteed to him on this day, they have communicated with him that they are not going to do anything to move him off the roster. So he will receive it. I'm like, bro, you could have just said he was going to get his bonus. Yeah. So I missed it. Eddie Jackson getting released, though, man. Yeah. All right. What's the what's the numbers? What are we talking? What are we talking? I don't know at this point. Well, you want me to give a guess? 30 yeah. years old. Five mil. What contract is he coming off of and how many games did he play in last season? Yeah, I doubt they'll have the market value up. Yeah, but it's like whatever this his contract quickly. was last year or whatever he's been getting on a per year average. You know what? They already have him cut though, spot rack. Shout out to spot rack. They, they ain't messing around. They, they said got they, him cut. They said this day playoffs now, bro. It's daytime now. So his salary was at 13 million. God dang. Yeah, it looks like his average earnings over the last 4 years eh, around 10 11 million. Yeah, signed a four year, fifty eight million. So that's uh, wow. That's yeah, D. That's we, probably we, like what? Yeah, that's four them, them year, double, That's a little under fifteen digits. million. Yeah, I was gonna say he ain't going back to five, bro. Seven? 
I think we start at seven. I think that's a good jumping. I could do that. Point the combo. Yeah, I think that's a good combo right there. Cause Steelers yeah, discount. Because from fifteen, Steelers organization discount. Even me saying seven, he gonna kind of be like, who, what, what, huh? Get to play with Menka. He, who, what, how, man? We talk. How many M's is that from fifteen to seven? Dead. But then again, you fly private all the time, so you're not tripping on that. That's why I get it. I get it. You was like, bro, just take that little deal, bro. Do the Brady. I get it. Yeah. But um, if you get him under 10, I love it. If you get him under 10, I love it. I just don't know if that's going to be the case. That's my only concern. One to Alabama. Yeah. If you get him under 10, I love it, though, bro. Hmm. His pedigree, like you said, is already he produced at this level. Well, obviously, he's had to have well, stepped I, down at least to an extent if he is. Well, I guess you know, I, I might as well check him out if I, I go to watch some of these Bears games over the next week oh, or two. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you might as well Justin double Fields dip. Anyway. Yeah. So, look, look, watch, watch Justin Fields. And then you ain't even got to, like, side eye. You could just wait and then just let him play and get to the defense. I love it. Yeah. I was thinking about watching some of the field stuff yesterday. I couldn't get myself to do it. I, I It was like one of those, uh-huh. like, look yourself in the mirror moments. Uh-huh. I'm like, I don't need to do this, right? Like. Yeah. I've got to see Justin Fields for three years. There's a reason I've said many times I don't think he's that good. Like, why do I need to? Why do I need to go back and watch this stuff? Look, that's how I felt today cutting on that Bo Nix tape. I was like, bro, I'm really about to do this Bo Nix thing as we on today. That's just, it's time to turn the page to start. And then I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just make a list. And at some point over the next week to two weeks, we go figure out. Okay, if this is the most accurate list of quarterbacks we really need to dive into or not, I do feel like Justin Fields is on that short list, though. I do feel like Kirk Cousins is on that list, and I do feel like Bo Nix is on that list also. Um, yeah, at least to start off with. I don't need to watch any Kirk Cousins tape. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. tell you that. And that wrong with that man? The, yeah, the problem with him is the money. Like mm-hmm. that's the thing. Yeah. I know he, you know, he can play in the league. It's not a quarterback that I want, though, on my mm-hmm. roster because of the money. We'll let you down when the moments are the brightest. One I would like to one see him. Name. I would like to see him with the Kenny Pickett opportunity. You know, I've seen him have to be Superman, and you know he can do some great stuff, but he's gonna come up short. I want to see him in the Kenny Pickett though, where it's like you got all it is with you. Can you give me what you've been doing? With Superman? We, no, I said he tries to be that, Superman. That's, that's where they was stretch. asked to. He was asked to do a lot more in Minnesota and in Washington than we've asked Kenny Pickett to do. And he's produced at a higher clip, also reflecting that. Oh, I agree yeah. with that 100. percent But yeah, for that money, I'd again rather yeah. see what Kenny Pickett's got next year. Yeah, I, you know how I feel about that whole convo. It's literally we go in cheap or we go in better option. Cheaper option don't always equal a better option, but. Kitty is a cheaper option, yes. Could be the better option. Oh, yeah. Ain't nothing stopping him from being that. Heck, yeah. Yeah, it could be the yeah. better option, but I, I just... Here's the thing. Kenny's, you know, 25, going to be 26. I think there's still more out there on his career. Mm-hmm. There's still more to be seen. Kirk Cousins, I know what I'm getting. My, my, my other question is, how long, though, are we talking? If Kirk gets you closer to a Super Bowl within these next two to three years. Isn't that what we're trying to do? Yeah. So that's kind of like that. I don't look at it as like either one of these options are a 10-year plans right now. I'm like, bro, who can give me the best two to three-year window right now, though? Because I figure after that, we're going to be reassessing coordinator. We're going to be reassessing or reassessing what's up with Coach T. Is he coming back, Stan? You know, is he leaving? I think the next two to three years, we're going to see a lot. Cam probably not here. What's happening with TJ? What's happening with Minka? Yeah. I think it's more valuable to see if Kenny could be your long-term solution, though, too. Yeah. You know, for the next 10 years. And I know you're, you brought up with Kirk Cousins, like, this could only be a two- or three-year thing. Yeah. Does he give us a, a better chance to make it to a Super Bowl versus, you know, what we got or what the other options are? Mm. I think those are fair things to bring up. But, like, with Kenny and his contract, we – should be able to put a better team around him. And that's if true Kenny also. can elevate to mm-hmm. what I expect him to be, we're we're getting great value yeah. for these next two. I know that's definitely the truth. Three man. potential, yeah, potential yeah. two or three years. Yeah, everything that you are preaching, we would we love, but everything that you're preaching also weighs so heavily on the person that makes a lot of still a nation very uncomfortable, which is Kenny Pickett. 
if Kenny develops like you're saying, then yes, that works great. And we are just on cloud nine. We love the roster. We love all the additions. But if he doesn't develop any more than what we've currently seen, then we're sitting here once again feeling like how we felt at times this year. We got a lot of talent, a lot of pieces, but at the most important position, we can't get enough consistency, enough production out of there, man. But that's going to be the risk one way or the other because you're either taking the risk on bringing a Kirk Cousins or Justin Fields or Bo Nix or somebody else in here to see if they can do that. And we know it's going to be a ripple effect, both positive and negative from however you got to acquire them dudes. But with Kenny, you don't have to spend as much on the front end. But yeah, you do run the risk of if it doesn't develop any further than what it's shown you. Now you're another year, potentially two years. It, it, yeah, yeah, it could be a shot year. Yeah, it could be a shot year, but. I feel like that's the goal. That should be the yeah. goal for a franchise. Like, can we get a guy so where we can be consistent over mm -hmm. the next like decade? No, hundred percent. And that's what you talk like, about. I, like, first I don't round. want it to be ups and downs. Like, almost how the Colts were yep. going through Philip Rivers, yep. Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, everything up until they got to Aaron Rod or Anthony Richardson. Hundred percent, bro. I want to find a guy. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that could still be up for debate at this point. But yeah, yeah he was looking promising. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of. I mean, you know how I feel about right. Cousins and, I mean, even Fields and any, any of that. My my strategy has been said uh, many times over the last two or three weeks and how I want to handle this quarterback room. Mm. Sound like a broken record at this point. Like I said, I don't I don't even know if I'm going to be able to make it through this offseason here. I, I don't know. I was about to say, because they coming at you how many, every, how many more every different single times day they got a different quarterback, Can bro. I say it or how many different, yeah. like, Angles or ways can I say yeah. about what I want from this QB room? They be over here like, no, Deke, we are not going to just believe that Kenny is just going to magically develop because you said he's going to magically develop. They're like, bro, we haven't seen it. If they don't have faith. I like your faith, though, because, yeah, you're doing it how it's supposed to be. Uh, it's not It's not completely blind faith either. I mean, I saw good things from Kenny. Took a little bit of a step back this year. We also had Matt Canada as coordinator. We've won games with Ken. Like there's, there's, there's plus and minuses to what we've seen yeah. thus far. Would I like to see overall more production to help my points? Sure, but that's the part of this offseason. But clearly, the Steelers, at least to some extent, agree with you because they are also the ones kind of yeah, waiting around like, to see what's up. It's more that meets the eyes, or it's more that meets the stats that you're seeing out there with yeah. Kenny. Fish momentum. Hey everyone, best part in the world. Hashtag Mr. Jack Myers Jr. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> this is this is 100 percent true. X Concept says, "Hey Deke, it feels like we're two three months into the off season, and it's only February 15th. It's wild." No swear, bro. Swear. But this is what happens when um yeah you're you're trying to figure out the quarterback position. I feel like it makes everything age way worse. It feels like it's been 10 years since Ben was here, bro. It ain't even been five years. Think about it, bro. It feels that much longer because of this whole quarterback thing. It literally, every single day, it's like, bro, we got to talk quarterback because this is the most important position on your team. That's why they get the most praise, why they get the most money, but that's also why they get criticized and critiqued the hardest as well. But this is not going to go away until we get that position solidified, man. But, um, the dog, the homie said he is good to go. So uh, I'm going to call him real quick. And after that, we get this thing rolling, dig. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax. Enjoy this interview with former Steelers Pro Bowl fullback, Roosevelt Nix. What's the word? What's the word, bro? So you... Let's get it, man. I appreciate you again, bro. You already know that, man. So look, I'm about to hit you on real quick. After that, that, we do an intro and get it going, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. You hear me? All uh, right, bet. Bet. So give me one second there. Yep. Did is, did is. My uh, guys. All right, all right. What's the word, bro? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 
Children of all ages. Oh, man, we joined by one of my guys today, man. This one of the ones right here, man. Enjoy the five-year career right here with your Pittsburgh Steelers during that beautiful killer B time frame, might I add, man, 2015 to 2019 mm-hmm. seasons. But more importantly, man, this dude was a one-time fullback blocking for arguably the best back during that span as well and a straight-up special teams demon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm talking about the one and only Mr. Four or Five, Rosie Roosevelt Nix. My no, dog. Brother, My dog. Appreciate man. you, bro. Appreciate you for having me, man. I love what y'all doing here. I had to come on and show you some love, my brother. Nah, man. Like I said, definitely appreciate you. Every time I see you, you either on somebody's island or making an appearance somewhere. I'm like, bro, you big time. I want to be like you when I grow nah, up, man. That's man. all I'm saying. Nah. I want to be like you when I grow up, bro. Okay. <laughs> Oh, no, man, you got it figured out, man. You got the beautiful <laughs> wife, the beautiful family, bro. You always been an inspiration, man. Always. Bro. No, all love, man. You already know, man. The folks say hello as well, man. But um, for sure. Let's hop into this thing, man. Let's what do it. Have you been up to since football? I mean, you know, we see some of these guys they go out start podcasts. Some of these guys get into coaching, but with you, yeah. man, it's been a little bit more quiet in terms of you know from a public standpoint. So, what have you just been up to, man? Man, you know me most, man. You know, I'm I'm a low-key guy, man. So I try to stay out the way. But, man, since I've been done, honestly, bro, I've just been really, you know, just enjoying the uh, the fruits of my labor and the mm-hmm. time that I put in the league. Been doing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, mental health, um, you no, know, just kind of. Big facts. Yeah, just well, working hey, look, on. You one of the dudes I done leaned on. You already know. Heck yeah. I already know, brother. So, you know. You know, our time in the league was something special, but we got to take care of our, ourselves outside of it to, you know, make sure we still have an identity and we can still and, and maintain and, and go through this thing called life, you know. So mm-hmm. um, I've just been taking care of the family, man, and just really just, you know, the one day at a time, brother, one day at a time. But definitely been working on the mental health, you know, staying in shape. Trying to just, you know, better myself every day, man. Hey, every dog, day. Big facts. Hey, hey, look, and I be peeping you on your check in. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. He's still fit. He's still abbed up. I see you. I see you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You know, I gotta lose a couple of Hey, look, pounds, just because we just cause we ain't. Yeah, just because we were tired, though, man, we got to look old, bro. So, yeah, shout nah, out to you on that, man. Heck yeah. Nah, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for noticing, man. No, nah, without a doubt, man. Now, um, you know, we obviously recently hired uh, Arthur Smith, man, big office coordinator. Yep. But more importantly, yep. man, big believer in running that ball and the yep. old school smash mouth. Get a fullback back out there. And, yep, of yep. course, when we talking fullback, we say, man, you got these new age fullbacks. You know the ones that look pretty in 7-on-7. Seven seven. They want to run around, mm-hmm. catch routes, and all that other stuff. But then you got what we call fullbacks. You feel me? Right, right, And, right. and, and, and of course, I said, man, I, I, I happen to know the guy. I happen to know a guy, okay? <laughs> I, said, I said, so, so you know. Since you are a dude, man, that did have to, you know, transition, you started out on defense, but then ultimately made yep. that switch to fullback. Just talk a little bit about your transition from defense to fullback and the mindset once you played fullback and how it was a change of being the hunter versus being the hunted. For sure, man. Uh, you know, I played defense my whole life. I played D-line in college. I played D-line in high school. I was, you know, in college, I was All-American, you know, four-time, uh, you know, one-time defense player of the year. You know, I got many awards at, at, at defense. And uh, honestly, bro, the offensive, the fullback thing kind of just came, just kind of just fell into my lap, man. I wanted to play football so bad. I wanted to play professional football so bad that uh, I was willing to do anything, man. And um, transitioning to offense was just one of those things that I was going to have to do. You know, mm. they was calling me too little to play defense. Um, and really what it was, bro, was when I got cut on hard knocks, that was my first time ever playing fullback. I've never seen an offensive playbook, never oh, read offense, never yeah. never did anything like that. I went to Atlanta, you know, right out of college, first time playing offense. And, uh, bro, it was like a, a whole other language, bro. Like, hey, look, I could like, only imagine what an offensive you know, play sounds like yeah, compared to a defensive Matt, play, bro. You know, I got Matt, oh, I got Matt Ryan and, and Julio. <laughs> I got Matt Ryan and Julio in the in, in the meeting room. I'm, I'm over here trying to learn about protections and stuff, man. So it just really was uh it was it was tough, man. But I wanted to, you know, it really took me to get cut and then to to go home and realize like, man, I want to play football, you know, and I'm willing to do whatever I can to get on that field. And you know, I I originally went to Pittsburgh as a linebacker. You know, they tried me out as a linebacker. Hey, look, we yep, got there at the same yep. time. Heck yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, so I went there to play linebacker, and then probably like bro, like maybe a week or two before uh, rookie mini camp, um, Coach Tomlin pulled me to the side one day randomly. Shout out to like, Coach T. Wanna, he said, "I want to see you at that fullback spot." You know, I heard you used to do that, and in my head, I'm like, "Damn, man, here we go again. I'm finna go to the crib." Bro said, "I I'm just got way. here." <laughs> yeah, I'm. It's like they try and boot me off. But, you know, little do we know, you know, I mean, at the time, you know, you know, the beautiful mind of Coach T, mm -hmm. but, you know, had I even played linebacker, chances are I probably wouldn't even made a team. You know what I mean? We had Shazier, we had James, mm -hmm. we had you, we had Benny, now, you know what I mean? So you, yeah. we was, we had, yeah. you know, TG, we had mad special teamers that mm -hmm. was linebackers, Sean Spence, and, you know, Coach T one day told me, like, straight up, he was like, man, I think you might got a better chance making this team at fullback. And, uh, you know, honestly, bro, it, it really started off as something small and uh, it, it really just grew and it, it continued to grow. You know, I've always been athletic. I've always been able to catch and run and have speed. And, you know, all of that was really it really wasn't. And I have been training, you mm -hmm. know, I've been training as an athlete rather than a, a defense alignment. So catching a ball and all that was second nature to me, so hands were natural, you know. Hey, tell me, tell me, tell me. Don't be trying to act like you just be catching everything. I heard how you just Come said that. Hey, bro, that's crazy. Bro, you know, you've, been, you've seen D, that. D, he catch I really, I D, really, he catch a touchdown and, I even know, and, and he talking D, crazy. He can't even, he can't yeah, even we say a word. We saw that one against the Raiders. He did caught him a touchdown, which was fire, and now he'll be like, you know, I had hands this whole time. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. On, all right, all right, I love it. You know I love it, bro. You know I love it. <laughs> I don't Boy, remember him dropping it. Oh no, no, he ball, he ain't gonna drop it. He go drop it. He go drop it. Let's nah, go. Nah, Let's nah. go. He ain't gonna drop the money. Like no, nah, he ain't gonna do D, that. Don't do me like that. <laughs> D, don't do me like that. That's what I, mean. I, I ain't I dropping remember. nothing, baby. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember <laughs> any of them. Nah, I ain't dropping it, baby. Let's go. But uh, um, no, nah, man. So you know, and then honestly, you know, uh, you know, transitioning to to fullback, bro. Like it was, it was low key easier. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like. It was, it was, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, 300 pounds, you know, a double team, you yeah. know what I mean? Like 600 pounds every play, you know? And, and when I switched over to fullback, man, it was like, excuse me. It was like, um, you know, I had a 240 every, hey, every look, five, six you, plays. You hit one of us. That's crazy. <laughs> you feel me? So I'm like, oh, this is a little bit, this is a little bit lighter and we moving around so I can learn how to, you know what I mean? Uh, uh catch not catch uh, absorb some of that um you know some of that that initial contact and uh man it was just you know they took their time with me coach t took his time with me and they had grace with the fullback and we really grew that thing out um you know it was a special time for for me to be in the berg and combine that with my special team's abilities man it was it was a position that we definitely grew out and uh you know, I'm appreciative of it, man. I'm, I really am. You know what I mean? Shoot, really we was appreciative. Hey, to... We were appreciative of it as well. You know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I love I love the fact that there's rumors and talks about, you know, we going back to the old school running. We got the new guy in here. and He's going to do his thing. So I'm excited to see, man. I'm excited to see. You know, I, I think we got some good things in the, in the bucket. Now, speaking of your time in the Berg, you were here for a minute with Mason Rudolph. What did yeah, you, Mace. Yeah, what did you think of those last four games uh, for this last season and his performance? And what do you think about his prospects here going forward? You think we're going to resign him? If we did resign him, like, how would you divvy up the quarterback room? Would you give him an edge over Pickett, or would you have a little bit more of a bias towards Pickett because he was the first round pick not too long ago? Yeah, just what's your take on Mason and the quarterback situation going into this off season? Man, you know, most, you know, you know, we've met several times, but most, you know, me, you know, I can't really, I, I, I'll never, I'll never fake the funk. Like I know exactly Thanks. what's going <laughs> on and I'll never, I'll never, you know, take away anybody's abilities or nothing like that. But, you know, I, I play with Mason and, you know, being the fullback, being, a, um, you know, being a fullback and being the third running back in the line, I usually caught my, 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 uh, ball protection and my hands off my, my all that stuff me and mason was usually you know i was usually one going with him so we have a we do have a relationship and i was super proud to see him you know putting on for the team um i have no idea what they're going to do with the quarterback room man i think that uh 
you know, I think that that is a position that we do need to um, we do need to solid up, solidify Thanks. as a team. Yep. Um, I'm not sure which way to go. You know, I like I like um, I like more. I like Kenny. Uh, I like uh, Mason. You know, and, and and just like with the game, I think just like in any other position, you know, if somebody's balling out, man. It's next man up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So okay, okay. I, I'm not, I'm not sure that. I have an answer on who should be starting, who should we bring in, or who should we be paying, or anything like that. You know, I, I more so want to see how you know Kenny responds. You know, yeah, we got a whole another training camp. We got a whole another season ahead of us, and uh, you know, I think you just like a rookie football. You know, that's tough for anybody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was tough for it was tough for Mason when he first got there, and you know, he went through the blender as well. Dang. You know, I think he even it's I think real. he even got his helmet knocked off or something. <laughs> Say, you know what yeah. I mean? Like he he don't went to sleep for it. You hey, feel bro, me? So it like real out there, you know what it is. Yeah, so I'm just like, you know, I really I really just uh you know, I hope that that battle is healthy. I hope that those guys is helping each other and I hope that the you know, we do solidify that position up in some way, shape, or form this year and just just get a little bit more consistency. That's yep. what I would like to see. Just a little bit more consistency. I think they're both able to play in the National Football League. I think they're both uh, phenomenal quarterbacks. Um, but I just, you know, looking for a little bit more consistency from the computer room. I mean, from the, uh, you know, quarterback room. Uh, scale of 1 to 10, how surprised were you, though, of Mason's performance in those last four games? How he showed out like that? Man, I think it, I think it, I think, uh, you know, Mason's been been there long enough and been through the fire long enough to realize what being in the playoff means and what Steeler football means in he playoffs. Knows that Steeler way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't. So I, I, one to ten, I, I just love the fact that we made it. You know, obviously we there's, we could always be better. You know, what I'm saying we could always do more, but um, you know, I think that uh, I probably give Mason like a you know like an eight. You know what I mean? Like shit. You know what I mean? It, we, we got to the offs. He did what he could they do. He forgot know? about. We had him buried on the depth chart. That's crazy, bro. And you, you know, know what I mean? Mitch you know, has Mason been, three Mason games. Been we got a lot. Yeah, he comes in and balls out. Like I don't think anyone had those expectations. Hey, look, when you him. talk about it's adversity, crazy. he is definitely checked off all of them boxes. Like, all right, man. Anything you looking never, for? He didn't. Yeah, he didn't went through it, man. Man, anybody that got their helmet snatched off them been through it. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts, bro. Big facts. It's real. <laughs> it's real, man. Dude, so man, let's get into this thing even more so, man. Now, I'm up I'm gonna hop back to a me. little bit, man. Now you coming out of high school, big time athlete, man. Obviously played the year, all that good stuff. It, Deke, you gonna like this. He he was so big time. He played in the big 33 classic. Now, for yo for those of you that don't know, this is the who's who of all-star games in Ohio, okay? I'm talking LeVar Arrington then played in it, Bob Sanders then played in it. You know the boy Micah Hyde, that's one of my cash right there. But more importantly, your boy Big Ben. Benjamin yep. Roethlisberger played yep. in this game as well. Just talk a little bit about your recruitment and ultimately what landed you at Kent State. Got one of your homies up here too, a little uh, we call him Mighty Mouse or excuse me, Mouse as well, man. <laughs> oh, Rod, yeah, Rod Dollar yeah, rocking with yeah, us, bro. He's, he's a podcast celebrity. Yeah, yeah, he rock with us, heavy, famous. man. We went to uh, we, you know, he actually went to high school with me. That's what he was saying, bro. He said you had Oklahoma yep. action and stuff, bro. Yeah, and we we actually played little league together as bro, well. That's crazy. That so is me crazy. And Mouse, we call him Mouse. You know All right. We call him Mouse. Mouse, Mouse is one of the, the firest running backs from the city ever. Talk, you know what I'm saying? Talk, talk that talk. Ever, ever. Let's I got to go. show Mouse love. Mouse wore five. You Yo. know what I'm saying? That was my boy. His daddy used to, uh, you know, used to do the little workouts and stuff. Like, okay. His dad was one of the first people that I seen, like, working their kids out. You know what no I mean? Respect. Like, oh, like, we got we got work. Like, I'm like, damn. Like, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. But, um, so it's all love between Mouse, man, for real. Shout you out, bro. Have, you can have real life conversations, football conversations. Like, it's nothing but love. But, um, you know, back to the high school thing, man, you know, the Big 33 thing. Like, my high school wasn't good. You know what I mean? We yeah. wasn't really good at all. And, you know, even with Mouse and stuff like that, we just never could put it together. And it kind of goes into the story of, like, you know, me and how I play football, bro. Just, you know, just a real humble football player that we never was on a winning team until Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? So yeah. even in high school, like I didn't, I was a backup for the big 33 truth be told. Um, I was an alternate mm. and uh, they called me 
and I, I, you know, I, I, of course I took it because we was playing PA. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Hey, look, you ain't ducking um, no smoke. I know that. Hey, hey, nah, hey. nah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so what a what an amazing what an amazing experience that was. And uh, you know, Kent State. I ended up at Kent. Truth be told, because Kent. I'll never forget him, Coach Ackerman. He he still may be in the NFL somewhere coaching. I know he was for a minute, but you know that Kent was the first team to come pull me out of class. This where let's say, hey, go. Say hey, we're gonna go watch your highlight tape real quick, and uh, you know we just wanted to let you know we're in the building. No, I'm like, all right, cool. That's major, bro. You remember, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so then, hey, look, they would know, they was my first offer, so I'm with you, bro. I'm like, bro, I love no, Kent State, yeah, absolutely. No, no lie, no lie, most 35, 40 minutes later. Coach, come back to my room, pull me out the class again. Like, we want to offer you. Yeah, that's we're hard, gonna send, bro. That's we're hard. gonna send you. We're gonna send you the official letter here in a little bit. But I just watched your tape. We want to offer you. We want to, and then you know, obviously, once they started offering, I still had the year to play. Um, so I did never commit. But um, as I as the year went on, you know, we got a couple more Mac schools and stuff. But Kent was in the building every week. It was bringing new coaches every week. It was talking to my coaches. They was. And, uh, you know, I went on a visit there and they and they treated me like the man. You know what I mean? They treated me like the man when I got there. And it was far enough away from Columbus that it was close, you know, if that makes sense. Oh, no, I get two, and a half, Heck yeah. two and a half hours away. I'm still in the Midwest. I get to play D-line. They told me I get to wear five. You, you know what I'm saying? With so, the digit going yeah, crazy. So, yeah. So, you know, they kept their word, bro. And I ain't going to lie. I'm the type of guy that's going to keep my word. So, if I tell you I'm going to come, I'm committed, then that's just what it is. Respect. You know what I mean? So, respect. Uh, you know, that happened. And, and, and that was all she wrote, man. It was a beautiful opportunity. You know, we ended up going to the MAC championship and losing. But, you know, the story was, you know, the story was written from there, man. So, you know, I was labeled a MAC guy off my size. I yeah. played with that chip. We got to play Bama. We got to play the big schools, and I always mm-hmm. showed out. So, you know, it, it, it was what it was. You know, I feel like sometimes, you know, even going there and then meeting James and having the same agent for a while, yeah. it just all kind of was like how it was supposed to It just go. meant to be. You know, Heck God, yeah. you know God had his, his, his hand on me. You know what I'm saying? He had me walking in the light, you know? So, no, I didn't really, bro. I didn't really think twice about it. You know, I just was like, yo, if we go here, anywhere I go, I'm going to dominate anywhere I go. I'm going to just uh, make sure that they know that I'm the big fish in this pond. You mm, know what I mean? Yeah, heck yeah, bro. Hey, look, and that so, confidence don't never change either, bro. I love it. No, no. that's And that's how I played it, bro. Even, you know, I played fullback, man. I never got... You know, people showed me love, you know what I'm saying? But, man, you know, that fullback job is, is yeah. a humbling job. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, like, bro. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, not everybody, you know, and everybody going to show you love for the 100-yard games and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You got to you gotta know that you bring something to the table and that yeah. it's, it's an important piece to the puck. No, without a doubt, man. This is crazy, too, man, as I think back to, like, the whole Kent State dynamic, you being there, and then just how many either Pittsburgh Steelers or dudes that – you know, crossed over with you in that time frame. Dre, like I said, Dre. I was on a dude about to go there, man. We talked Debo, yeah. Edelman. I'm like, bro, this is just crazy, man. Shout out to Kent yeah. State, though, man. Shout out yeah, to Kent, Kent State. Kent definitely got some guys. Yeah. Definitely got some names in there. You know, Antonio Gates. Yeah, then you start talking so. Cribs, Usama, all the Cribs, Lambert, yeah. 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 Cribs bro. Usama, Lambert, Debo. Yeah. Three, we had you know Brian yeah, Winters, from there, Josh Khan, yeah. Edelman. We got some guys, you know. Hey. Not not none of us late, but you know it's on the way. I feel like you know hopefully they can turn the program around. Nah, respect on that, bro. Now coming out of Kent State, though, I mean, let's talk about it, yep. right? You go in there, I mean, you yep. the player of the year, defensive player yep. of the year, rookie of the year, all Mac yep. every single year. I mean, you hooping, hooping. Talk mm-hmm. to us about this yeah, NFL man. draft story, man. What was going on? What led to it? And then how did draft night play out for you, man? So, you know, obviously I put my uh I put I can't remember what that what that form is that you you know, you obviously oh, you yeah, fill yeah, out to, like, see, yeah. to see what you know what your you know estimated draft uh-huh. pick or so you know, mine came back and said, you know, you probably ain't getting drafted, champ. <laughs> like, um, so it really was what it was, man. And I ended up going to Atlanta on a free agent deal as a fullback. Like I said, that's when they were shooting hard knocks. Mm-hmm. So I ended up going to Atlanta, 
like first time ever, like I literally the first time I ever heard an offensive play was like day one of like rookie mini camp. You feel me? So I was like, all I got is special teams at this point because I don't know what the quarterback is saying. <laughs> you feel me? So like, it don't even sound don't, like it makes yeah. sense. When I hear offensive call, nah, I'm like, bro, I, I don't speak that language. I speak Sammy, 33. I speak 22. I man, speak that. I'm telling you, they got protections. <laughs> they got it, bro. I never, I never once, like, most I can't lie to you, I had no idea. I didn't even know how to study the playbook. Like, I, I was writing stuff down on a note car, and I had no idea. I look back now, it would, it would have helped me no bit. All the stuff that bro, I was so writing. I don't write it all to what I'm writing about, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I was trying to figure it out because I wanted to play so bad. I remember calling my agent like, man, this ain't going to work, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't even know I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing out here. Like, I literally running the wrong way on plays and no, stuff. Like, oh, they, no. They doing, they doing checks. So, you know, truth be told, man, Head I got spit cut. I was the first, yeah, I was the first one going on Hard Knocks. You feel <laughs> me? But, like, my, I always knew, man, I always had faith that, like, if I went and played offense first, that I'd be able to, you know, um, turn this thing around and maybe get a chance to play defense. So, with that being said, you know, I ended up getting cut on Hard Knocks. It was, like, right before – I didn't ever got to play in a preseason game or anything, honestly. Um, I went home, bro. I ended up being the substitute teacher um, for the year back at my old high school. And then, you know, randomly got a call that next year, uh, right after the Steelers had lost to the Ravens, randomly got a call, you know, hey, do you want to try out for uh, a, a linebacker? And I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I've been working out, I've been doing all this stuff. Like, yeah, I'm trying to go. Like, let's do it. Man, uh, you know. That was all she wrote, bro. I was like, ain't no way this is getting away from me. You know, I, I knew that I would pass the athletic athlete test. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it really wasn't a factor of, like, being in shape. It was just more so of just having an opportunity. And I took the opportunity. And then when, like I said, Coach Tomlin came up to me a couple of weeks after that and was like, hey, I want to try you that line. I was like, oh, man. I mean, I fooled back so. And that's all she wrote, bro, honestly. Yeah, what was your reaction to that? Because that's how you got cut with the Falcons. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll never forget it. It was when we had the pool table in the locker room. I was just literally, you know, I'm a rookie, so, like, I'm going to keep walking around looking scary. So, so you know you what I mean? the pool table in that joint. <laughs> yeah, so I'm walking around looking scary and stuff. And, like, Coach Tomlin was like, you know, he just flat out just came. You know, he ain't really scared to come talk to nobody. So he just flat out came and told me, like, you know, I want to see you at this fullback uh, position type. And I'm like, you know, I ain't going to tell him no. I just like, all right. In my head, I'm thinking. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> he in my head, in my, in my head, I'm thinking, like, damn, I'm on the way out. Here we go again. <laughs> like, why he want to see me at fullback? I ain't never even played fullback. We already got a fullback. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shout out Will J. Oh, yeah, you know Willie Johnson. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, man, Shout out teams, to Will, yeah. Teams don't even have two fullbacks, so why he trying to train me? I'm just like, it's, it's, <laughs> here we go again. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I I made up my mind that very moment in our locker room. I was like, you know what? I was like, F it, man. It's, this is what we're going to do. We was going to do it like this. Um, Switch my number to 45, and that was it. Let's go. Let's go. When did you feel like you actually had a chance to make the team as the full wagger? When, when did you feel like you really got the hang of it? Uh, I really feel like things started turning for me in training camp when we got to put the pads on. Like, you know, mini cam OTAs and stuff, there really wasn't much of a fullback. You know, we ain't hitting, so there really isn't too much other than learning the position. Did, did you Did you team. say your OTAs was chill? Is that what you just said? It sounded like you just said that. Is that what you said? Was you chilling? Yeah, yeah you know. Bro, that, bro, that's crazy. Nah, nah, respect. You, you earned know, it, though. You, yeah, come on. You, you, you and car I'm crashes about, every day, know, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, like, the fullback, man, it comes with his days, right? Like, inside hey, he's seriously, run bro. days and yeah. full pad days. Those days, that's a those tough day. Days, that's a tough day. Yeah. You got to also remember, you know, the first four or five days of install of offensive playbook is all route stuff. Mm. Pass pro and stuff. So, yeah. You know, there is there is some time to chill, especially when they ain't passing me the rock. So it really wasn't an issue like trying to learn it. Like I said, that's why I say, you know, they had some grace with me. Yeah. You know, they had they took their time because 
there really wasn't at that time much of a two back system in Pittsburgh. You know, we used to run the same mm-hmm. for my first year or two. We used to run the same plays when I was in the game. You know, back to back to back. Like everybody knew what was going on. <laughs> Big facts, bro. Big facts. So. You know, when he told me, I was just like, you know, this is how we're going to make the team. This is what we got to do. So when I got the training camp, you know, everything, I started just making a little, making noise here, building a relationship with the special teams coach, Danny Smith. And then um, we, my rookie year in Pittsburgh is the year we played in the Hall of Fame game. Mm-hmm. So I knew that we have mm-hmm. five, we have five opportunities rather than four. And uh, for me, I was like, that's perfect. Like, it's more time than I get to do what I do. And uh, I ended up, like, my only goal was to make a tackle in every every preseason game. Bro, that's special fire. team. That is fire. And uh, I did. I no, did. I made say, a yeah, you, you did your thing, yeah. bro. Stop playing. You do your <laughs> you, thing out there. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, I did. And then uh, I'll never forget, man, Lawrence Timmons came up to me one day after practice. Shout out to Law Dog. During training camp. Law Dog came up to me. And he was like, bro, you're going to make this team. And that gave me the boost of inspiration to be like, keep going. You know what I mean? And I literally, I was during training camp, my rookie year, I was, I was like shadowing like the greats, like James, like Harrison, like doing mm-hmm. like little stuff in the weight room. He was doing following Pouncey around in the Shout training room, the working Pouncey on my body. Goons. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's so like, go. I was really, I was really taking my time learning the right way to be a professional completely opposite of what was going on in Atlanta for me. Mm. So with that being said, man, we had a long training camp that year, a super long training camp it was five games. Like I said, so that's them. That's them. near six, seven weeks in training camp. Right. And, and, we, hitting. and we, and hitting we hit in every camp. day. Oh my God. We was hitting. Yeah. We hitting, we hitting every day. So I'm getting to hit people. I'm getting the show. And then, uh, probably around like, the fourth game, I was like, man, I think I solidified my spot on the on the practice squad at least. Like, we already got a full <laughs> yo, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that I probably at least solidified in the practice squad. I had to. I know I, I'm at least that good. And then one day, we're like a succession of like three or four days. And most probably it's probably going to bring some memories back. But <laughs> there was a – everybody know Vinny. You yeah, know what so, you know what so this going do. Yeah, right. My rookie <laughs> year, Coach Tyron was going on and on uh-huh. and on, like three or four days about mm-hmm. like, you know what Vinny going to do. He was just showing Vinny lighting people up all training camp. Like, deep, deep. Lighting, Vince lighting had a up. highlight tape of destroying running backs, fullbacks, and tight ends. Now mind you, this is him, bro. this yeah. is this ain't Vince William year seven and playing uh-uh. middle linebacker. This uh-uh. is. This is Looney Tunes. He crazy. Vince. He don't care about life. He, he, yeah, he don't care. Fourth, third, fourth year in the league. <laughs> he don't care, you know bro. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he out here really smashing people, yeah. like, really taking, like, sending them home. In practice, bro. Camp. Yeah, you like, bro, you really fired on this dude right here. It's like. Actually, Coach Tomlin, <laughs> that's where he came up saying. I'd rather say I'd whoa. I'd rather say whoa than sick him. Talk about it. <laughs> Vince was killing folks, so, bro. Yeah. Yeah, no, he was killing people. And, like, you know, Coach Tomlin, like, rightfully so, he was gassing him up. You know, it was like three, four days of just gassing him up. Vinny was hot. Yeah. You know, that's what happens. In and we felt we felt great about that too. His guys on our side. You know, we, pre- we appreciate. Yeah, because he yeah. was a linebacker. Facts. You know, he was setting the tone for practice. Like it was actually like quite remarkable what was going down. And uh, it was a full pad day. We had inside run, <laughs> and I had already seen the script, so I already knew that we had a counter on. And I knew I was going to be in. I knew Vinny was going to be in. I knew that he Vinny was going to be in. I knew the lineup. That's crazy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I already knew. Hey, so I'm like, go. man, I'm about to, I'm about to smash. I'm about to light him up. Like, man, we ain't doing this no more. He been plotting on Vinny since lunchtime. That's crazy. Because <laughs> I, I gotta make a name for myself. You feel me? Yeah, like this is yeah. Coach Tomlin calling this the big dog. Like, nah, like I'm the big dog. You feel me? And mm-hmm. We ran that play, man. I, you know, I had a, yeah. I had a, I had a pretty decent hit on Vinny. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, that kind of like the next day in the team meeting room, oh, Coach yeah. Tom was like, "You know what Vinny going to do?" Yeah. Kind of showing the slideshows again, but Shout this time, he showed him, yeah, he showed him, he showed him, you know, the play where me and him had made contact, and uh, man, that kind of like. That was different, like, a, like I said, a little bit more inspiration yeah. of like you doing the right things, bro. Like, so once that happened, um, 
I was like, yeah, I definitely can be on practice squad, like in the National Football League for sure. And then, like I said, I keep going back to this this Hall of Fame, this five preseason game. It benefited me because the last preseason game we played mm-hmm. Carolina. And uh, uh, I was like, man, I got to do something real crazy to make this team. Like, I have to do something right Buzzy, now hey, to make this team. Talk to your talk, bro. You noticed, <laughs> you noticed the play that we have never heard. Coach T won't let us not hear this one. So go ahead and drop it nah. over real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> So I'm like, man, I have to do something. Like, I don't have any more reps. They tell you, when you're a rookie, they tell you when you go into the game in the preseason. Like, you know your your amount of time that you play, you know your opportunities, unless you like, you know, playing out the rest of the game. Obviously, you don't know what's going to happen. But me, I knew that my offense was over in the first half. I knew I was going on special teams in the second half. I just didn't quite know how I was going to make a play to make my name ring bell. And uh, once they told me I was going to be on punt block, talk about it. I was like, I got to block a punt. I got to block a punt. I got to. That's the only way I'm going to make this team. That's what they was hyping up the whole time. Like, if you block a punt, that's a football team. If you don't make this team, you're going to make another team. I swear. So I was like, I have to block a punt tonight. It was a night game against Carolina, probably like the third or fourth mm-hmm. quarter. I can't remember it exactly, but it was time for a punt. And, uh, Ironically enough, the dude that I blocked the punt on was somebody that came to Pittsburgh a couple years later. Um, but nevertheless, I was like, I have to block this punt. So punt, they call us to go out there. And at halftime, I was like, man, I, I literally was talking to myself. I said, Rose, you've got to do something crazy, bro. Like, this is your last opportunity. This is the last preseason game. You pro- Like, this, this is the last chance. Is it? Heck yeah. They, they call punt return, man. And I just... I, I blocked the punt, bro. I just, I just blocked the punt. Like, I can't even I, – I don't know what happened. I just – inside rush, made a little move, blocked the punt. I look at everybody man, went man. crazy. Yeah, everybody, everybody went, went crazy. crazy. And then See, I was you like – blocked the one. Oh, it's so I, I, went over, I went over to the sideline, and, and Coach Tomlin was there with his hand out. And at that time, uh, I hadn't seen that that handshake. That, but, you, you know, know what that five years, <laughs> yeah. yeah, playing five years there, I, I definitely realized and seen it happen again that like that handshake mean like yeah, we good. Yeah, we that's the confirmation, like, bro. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the team. You know, what hey, I'm you saying? were part of the family now officially. That's what he was saying. So right, you here. right, right. So that next day it was the final cuts or whatever. You know, I walked in the building. I was scared shitless. I didn't know what was gonna happen, and. uh you know, they was just like, they didn't nobody talk to me. So I was like, all right, like, it's kind of weird. Ain't nobody talking to me. I mean, obviously, I ain't going home yet. But I wasn't able to relax because, you know, we had mm-hmm. some people that was suspended that year. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm still not solid on this team. Like, I have to make noise. You know what I mean? I have to make noise so I stay around because we had two people suspended mm-hmm. that come back. That's two roster spots. Man, Mind you, we still have... Too. And in the backfield, and we still have a fullback on the roster, mm-hmm. not including me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it's two roster spots that got to come back. We got two roster, we got two fullbacks on the roster. Like I got to make noise. I got to continue to make noise. So my only goal, honestly, was to like make some noise on special teams every opportunity that I could. And probably my rookie season, you know, I ended up probably having a tackle or so every game, mm-hmm. man. Like just stay consistent with that. And kind of just built out a whole, you know, career on just a little niche. Yeah, no, seriously, man. Yeah, like it's like a little niche of just having my own little special little way I floated with that team. You know, them special years of the killer bees. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody was so important to the success, you know, mm-hmm. and I just really took responsibility for my role, yeah. you know, and my role was exactly what it was. It wasn't nothing special. But it was to make plays and it was to block. And I and I was like, I'm not about to give it up to nobody else because <laughs> this what this what I've been working for. You know what I mean? It's so big facts. I just I just really just you know I stay humble, I stay prayed up, and uh, that was really it, man. I just really took that opportunity with the full head of steam, dog. No. Can't say nothing else about it, dog. No, let's go, bro. Let's go, man. So shoot, bro. I'm even thinking to myself, man, just going back, you bringing up the special teams. Man, I remember you smacking the cat Raiders game fresh off a of renegade on kickoff. And we like, bro, oh, yeah. big time play turnover, like electric. But then at the same yeah, time, man. I'm thinking of 
you blocking for L Bell. And I'm like, bro, we watching some of these crazy runs. And it's like, you the dude making that lead block, man. But um, if you could just talk about what it was like actually blocking for L Bell, because we know his style was very different than a uh, D'Angelo Williams or even a Fitzgerald Tucson, right? But what yeah. was it like blocking for him, that style of running man, and how, you know, did that impact your job? Well, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to 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 block for for D Will, mm -hmm. L D Will, baby, yes, go, James. You know what I'm saying? I had thousand yard backs. Every one Shout of my out to backs, James Conner too, man, yards. had care, bro. Every one of my backs had thousand yard. Every one of my backs went to Pro Bowl. You feel me? Like, hey, you said I that with pride too. I heard you on that too, bro. No, I'm just, you. I'm just, I just know I I'm heard just you. Keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Every one of my backs. Shoot, a couple of my backs was leading the leading the league in rushing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to our offensive line that was also amazing during the Killer B time. Respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to show love to everybody. You know, we had an old line that was magical. Mm -hmm. and you put me back there and you put the, the guys with the uh, holding the rock. A movie. You know what I'm saying? We running for two, 300 yards. A movie. We're going to do that. We but uh, L Bell, Blizzard. man. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. We just, that just came back around, you know, that, that whole highlights of all that, you know, playing Buffalo. But, uh, L Bell, man, he was special, man. He was he was special. He had an inactive ability to be able to make everybody play at his speed, which really mm -hmm. helped me out because it was, you know, I, well, one thing about it, two things for sure, he definitely ran a couple of different styles. Well, shotgun and then two yeah. back was a couple, a couple of different L Bells, right? Because he was a bigger <laughs> yep, back. Yep. So he, he could drop the shoulder on you too in that power, right? So... You know, the patience that he shown when he had the ball and be able to slow the defenders down to make them second guess themselves uh -huh. and not stay home for them jobs was what made it so successful. You know, like if, if the linebackers would stay disciplined, it probably would have been less of a challenge to get him on the ground. Yeah. Um. So blocking for him having people sitting around looking and seeing where he going and then me just coming full speed and and being able to just get my block that's that's how that works you know i usually caught i usually caught them looking for him and i'm looking for them and you, you know what I'm saying? folk over there right yeah. right so they 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 too worried about the, the dead leg and the hezzy and the Oh, he, patient, he, he, bouncing. He, yeah, he got all that in the repertoire. Heck you yeah. know, the, the bouncing after he kept bouncing behind the old line. they like, where'd he go? Where'd yeah. he go? Then the fullback is right there. Right? So he made the job easier for everyone, honestly. And, um, you know, it was just cool just being able to just, you know, he was in shape. You know what I mean? Never came out the game. He had hands. He had the jukes. He had the power. You know, for a while, he was definitely the best back in the league in my eyes. No, big facts. When I said it, you big know? facts. You know, I'm on you on that, too. Absolutely. You think he's legit about wanting to come back? Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, did you I see it? Know, have you, have I, you seen the Snapchat I, stories? I, 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 yeah, yeah. You know, L. Bell, my boy, man. You know, Shout out to L. Bell, man. Shout out to L. Bell. He's from, he from Bell. Columbus, too. Heck you know yeah. what I'm saying? He's from Columbus, too, man. So... <laughs> Me and L. Bell locked in forever. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's a good idea for him to go back out there. You know, but if he feel like he can do it, bro, shoot. Hey. I, hey, I ain't mad at him. Oh, I, know I, I, I thought you was about to say you pulling up, too. I but say we, we got it. We need a fullback. We said we man, need the OG I fullback. Lie, like, I, I, seen you, bro, I seen your beach pitch. You was with the rainfall. I was like, bro, you in shape, shape, bro. Like, you could go block the power nah, right man. now, bro. Yeah. I could, I got about two powers, <laughs> two two powers so and rough. two flats, so two rough. flats and and like maybe two kickoffs. Okay, okay. Other than bro, other you said you that, got two kickoffs in you. Oh, you nah, still a psycho, bro. You still yeah, a yeah, real yeah. Life I got psycho. two kickoffs. You you a real life psycho, nah, bro. Yeah. No, nah, most listen to me. Oh. Two kickoffs. Oh. Now I ain't saying I'm making two tackles. I'm saying oh, two right, kickoffs right, right. and one tackle. Respect. I'm definitely gonna get one tackle. I'm definitely gonna do that. But I just ain't really got that, you know, bro. Doing a lot of the mental health stuff, man. Doing a lot of re doing a lot of work, yeah. deep, deep work on myself, and you know why I even played football and stuff like that, bro. Honestly, man, being away from the game has took away like some of that OG like yeah. mentality of like aggression mm -hmm. in football 
and fullback and ISO. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to be in a different mentality know, to be things, able bro. to do the, to do those type of things. Now, you know, like I said previously, El Bell, he made people play at his speed. Mm-hmm. That was a, a unique trait. Now, could he do that now? It's five years removed? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. He did it once. I don't know, but I, I wouldn't put, I, you know, I ain't going to never shoot nobody's yeah. dream down. Yeah. But if he could do it how he did it, maybe. But I think the game has changed. I think the game has changed even in the five years, the two, three years that I've been going, a couple years even where I think yeah. the game is honestly just changing, you know. So, you know, if you want to do that, shout out to him. I'll support him. No, of course. But. But uh, I, you know, I I can't go back out there. No, respect on that. Hey, hey, look, I was just shocked. Like I said, of all my homies that we talked with, I'm like, bro, you the first one that said you still got some special teams plays in you. That was the first thing that I threw away from my repertoire. I said I have nothing left for that part of my life anymore. Like, I can't go back out on another kickoff. Bro. You gotta remember, bro. Oh. That was the only, that was the only place I got to shine. Bro. I know, that but was... it's that's 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 like the front line, bro. That's the danger zone. That's bro. People All don't right. come home from kickoff. You know that, yeah. That's different, man. Hey, it ain't gonna be. You, you gotta be willing to go to sleep to put somebody to sleep, bro. You know how that goes. Swear, bro. You know, Swear. I, I ain't gonna go out there and hurt myself, but I'm definitely gonna protect myself. Hey, look, we ain't blinking on nothing. I'm telling you now. All no, right, we, we gonna figure it out blink. afterwards. Can... We ain't gonna blink. I tell you that. <laughs> I, I'm always gonna have that dog in me. <laughs> dog, big now that, that 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 aggression, that want and that urge to like yeah. really just really want to put my face on somebody. Yeah, and just really, you know, Try run see, can, can full speed your into eyes. somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, like that that's not in me no more, man. Yeah. Like that's that was that was that was playing with a chip on my shoulder, you know. And yeah. I'm thankful I had that, but you know, I've done a lot of work to really figure out, you know, why I was even like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah, respect on that, man. And, and big time kudos to you as well, man, for finding that post football too, man. We know how that journey goes, bro. So absolutely yeah, salute man. you, man. Absolutely. And shout out to all the dudes who, who might be struggling. No, seriously, bro. You know, it's real. And, not, and not saying nothing to nobody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you're listening, you know, feel free to hit me up. Yeah. You ain't by yourself, baby. You definitely not by yourself, man. Now, back in 2017, baby, you did get a chance to go ahead and, and, and get that official Pro Bowl night. And, and, and shout out to Deke. Deke put emphasis on this before we intro you. He was like, he actually got a legitimate Pro Bowl, not the one where you like 10 alternates, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, he declined, he declined, he's They're just sick, giving him he away lost now. his flight. All right, how you get the Pro Bowl? Yeah. You, nah, you a legit you Pro know, Bowl with yours, man. You so deserved it. T- talk about that experience for you, man. Well, you know, I was second behind Devlin. Hey, you know, they went to the they, they you, went you to said, the You Super said Bowl. second and not the 10th one? That's yeah, legitimate. Nah. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And, and you know, and you know, Unfortunately, at the time, you know, I was super excited and happy, but I I really didn't give myself much grace, if Mm. I'm being honest, because I did want to be the first. I did want to be the best. So I was excited. And, I, I, you know, I was watching the game like, you know, if New England win, I'm going to the Pro Bowl. If, If New England lose, I'm not going to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. So for me, I was excited. But I wish at that moment in time I would have gave myself more grace mm. and been able to enjoy it more. You know, nevertheless, I was yeah. still happy and I still felt like I deserved, but I did not like the fact that I was waiting to watch the game for somebody else. You mm. know what I mean? I know, 100%, bro. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the Pro Bowl ended up being one of the best things that ever happened to me, man. Like, uh, I'm sitting in my office now just looking at this pictures and the cleats and stuff man it was a, it was an opportunity for my granddads to come together and I respect you know that, bro you know just be into like they really did a really 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 amazing job with that part of the nfl like the pro bowl thing that was one of the best things that i've ever experienced just being around you know all these players these idols and then their families and everybody's family just getting along and you know, it's it's not like it's not like a competitive thing. Yeah. I mean, it's competitive, but you know, right, it's right. like a family thing. And uh, we ain't looking at each other like just, food. Yeah, I yeah, exactly no, nah, everybody's yeah. just on ice, bro. And and I was just really like blessed and fortunate enough to be able to participate in that and expose my family to that. And uh, that year, man, that year was magical, man. Like I said, you know, sometimes guys just get hot. 
Yeah. And and guys just make plays and plays and plays and just doesn't matter. It just falls in their favor. And on top of all that, you stay healthy enough to make it through the season to go to the Pro Bowl. So, you know, I just I, – I'm just truly just blessed and highly favored to be able to do that, man. And, you know, I'll never, I'll never exchange that for anyone. And, you know, just being there with all the teammates yeah. that year, like it was, it was a beautiful thing, bro. It was really a beautiful thing, man. It was a great opportunity. I never would have thought that like I would have that on my, you know, my resume of like, yeah, Pro Bowl, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Pro Bowl football player, like, Basically, all star, you know, like no, yeah, no, nah, 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 basically, you are, you know, how we were. Say, bro, nigga, yeah. you're a pro bowl, bro, that's a pro bowl, man. Yeah. Put some respect on yeah. the game, bro. Yeah. yeah, nah, so it's beautiful, bro. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't change that for the world, man. I wouldn't change it for the world. All right, I gotta ask this one How often, sure, how often do you think about that fake punt fourth down celebration against the Saints? Man, I I usually get reminded. I usually get reminded. I usually get reminded on Twitter by some random dude once or twice a year. Yeah. But uh, you know, we had a bunch of idiots on. Like, <laughs> we just have a fun bro, too. <laughs> like, like, bro, our special teams unit. Like, we was a bunch of guys who really didn't have like starting roles. You know what I mean? Like, we was just... Hey, hey you a starter on teams, bro. Stop playing, yeah. bro. Yeah, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, like, I'm talking about us, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the band. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, bro, like, we got to be real. Like, bro, we sitting waiting for special teams. We not going and practice doing offense, defense. Yeah. We sitting there waiting for a punt, punt return, and our practice is over. Now, when you talk about running fakes and stuff, mind you, bro, when you running a fake, you working it all week. You Everybody pr- knows it's coming. Everybody mm-hmm. knows what time it is, uh-huh. and we practiced that joint all week. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced that joint all week, man. We knew it was time to go, and when that joint got called, man, the defender did everything we thought he was going to do until the last second, and, uh, man, I thought I had it, but it didn't help, man, when Danger screaming in my ear. Hey, like, yo, you done threw the Danger under the butt. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, he like, you got it. You, you, know, you got it. You got it. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at on the field. Yeah, because like, if you look at the play, all the Saints dudes are celebrating. Yeah, that you didn't get yeah, it. You, you, yeah, you went into so All I hear is people celebrating, bro. I'm like, people celebrating, <laughs> danger screaming, you got it. Danger I'm wild. like, oh, it's time for me to show out. We in the dome. <laughs> TV on me. Yeah, it's time for show. I'm going to get some oh, camera time. You feel me? And it was like, oh, short. Boy. I said, oh, I'm the biggest asshole. <laughs> And then I seen, I seen like that. I think that was like the same time that Drake had the. I mean, J Cole had the one song about some people make memes and some people make millions. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, at least we, at least we all on the same page here. Like, at least it ain't going down like that. But you know, bro, when you try to show out, when you try to show out, and you try to show your eyes, man, stuff like that's gonna happen to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's humbling. That's how you. That's how you get humble. You know. Hey. Like you said, you live and you learn. You come with it, come with the territory, man. And yeah, bro, shout you know, out ain't to nobody, Danger, nobody, though. nobody, that is nobody's <laughs> ever pressed me about that in real life. You know, I don't even know if people even remember that, but I definitely <laughs> remember feeling it's, like it's that. kind it's of iconic. No, no, honestly, bro, it was one of the moments like we all kind of remember where we were at. You know me, I was injured. I'm out in AZ. <laughs> Right, I'm watching right. the game, you know I'm dumb hype. I'm like, this my guys, you feel me? So of course I'm with you celebrating. I'm injured, but I'm celebrating with you until I see it, it ain't the first. I'm like, oh bro, it's bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that looks crazy. Was anything said to but, you as you went to the sideline? Nah, because I think I was just the one who looked the worst. But everybody, <laughs> everybody was celebrating, bro. There was a lot of people out there dancing, bro. Everybody was celebrating. Yeah. Most people. Most people wasn't on camera with it, like, but everybody was like, quick little seconds before we found out it wasn't over. People was like, hype. I ain't gonna lie to you. people, was like, but you know, I'll take that, bro. I'll take that, man. Everybody got it, you know, NFL moment, man. That's one of mine. And, you know, hey, it is what it is, you know. No respect on that, bro. Respect, man. We got a couple more questions too, man. And dude, this interview's been fire, man. The people are loving you as well, man. But um. Did want to ask, man, you brought up a little bit of your time playing in the Killer B era. You know, we talk yeah. Big Ben, L. Bell, Pouncey. <sighs> I mean, 
just talk about what that was like, though, in all seriousness, man, for you. I said Pounce. I meant uh, Antonio Brown. Excuse me on that one. But um, just yeah, talk yeah, a little bit yeah. about that killer beat era, man. And what but you know, Pounce, you. Pounce you know, was he, a big he, thing during bro, that, the goons, too. Bro, he the goons. That's why I had to bring him up. My brother's the goons up front. The goons and the killer bees was hand in hand. Man. Hand in hand. Bro, you know, I think about my career. I think about my five years. I think about being a Pittsburgh Steeler from 2014 to 2019. Mm-hmm. Having Coach Tomlin, you know, sitting by dudes like you every single day, you know what I'm saying? Every single day and just learning. And I was a young player, bro. I was just learning so much. Hey, look, you, you was young, but, you, you know, you looked old. You looked like you, you right. been in the league for a while. Yeah. Nah, I mean, because I had been humbled, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was a substitute teacher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I got to Pittsburgh, bro, you, when I got around a energy, winning, bro. Yeah. I got around a winning mentality, bro. It was new to me. You know what I'm saying? We didn't win at Kent. We, mm-hmm. went, we had one year, but our coach left and we didn't win ever again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like for me, when I see James on the on the elliptical for an hour before practice, or I see Pouncey getting, <laughs> getting worked on for an hour before practice, yeah. or I see Heath doing his Heath Miller doing his thing, Got them or AB doing, yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing enough to be great. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, I feel like for those years of the Killer B era, when AB was the best in the league, mm-hmm. and Ben was Big Ben, mm-hmm. and El Bell was doing what he was doing, I feel like. I had to take advantage of every opportunity to be the best football player I could be because I I just knew I I took the approach that this this football shit will not last forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I've already been home. I got my first check. It was fourteen thousand dollars, but I was getting five hundred dollars every two weeks as a substitute teacher. Boy, so when I got that check, no talk. When that I got that check, baby. I was yeah. you know what I'm saying. When I got that first check, I'll never forget it. I opened it in front of Will Gay. Shout another out Deucey, bro. Uh, Shout out to Deucey. Another super vet. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Another facts. super vet with a lot of experience. And he was like, yo, you ain't never going to go back to teaching, huh? I said, hell nope. no, bro. <laughs> it's a wrap. You feel me? <laughs> like, absolutely not. I'm going to take advantage of every opportunity because this is my job. And being there for that and seeing that, it really was able, like I said, bro, I was able to really be like, yeah, I'm like, even though I'm a role player, I'm going to play my role and I'm going to be the best role player on the team. Mm-hmm. And you ask, you know, anybody, like, I never tried to do anything more than I wasn't. You know what I mean? I never tried to do, I always there for my teammates. I just did what I could do. You know what I mean? And that was special, just seeing all those great, those great players just do great things and just understanding all their different stories and just, just seeing how they work. It was just amazing to be a part of that and and like i wouldn't trade those five years on that those team like that team with no nowhere else man. Bro, nowhere let's else go. let's go you know what i'm saying like so when i even when i you know got even when i got released and everything and how all that went down you know it didn't it didn't make a difference to me bro you know what i'm saying like god had already had something planned for me yeah you know he had already put me through everything i was supposed to go through so in regards to football you know what I mean? So it really wasn't much. It really wasn't much, but just a blessing, like an opportunity to just see all them great. Like, come on, bro. AB was the best receiver in the league for like five years bro, straight. Oh, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we had the we best O line. Yeah. We had the best O line for like five years straight. Boswell didn't miss a kick. You know what I'm come saying? On, like, bro. Come on, man. we seen like, the Wizard of Boz. We seen the movie start. It was like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah. And and I'm and I'm on this team, me. Come on, man. All I'm doing is running down on kickoff. Let me just be the best. I talk. Let that, me just bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what am I what am I doing here? Yeah. Like, that's how that's how I approached it with the killer bees. Like, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, let me just and, and you know, Coach Tom used to come up to me every day, bro. Every day and tell me justify my existence. Mm. Hey. I you, remember him saying to you, hey, fullbacks attract a lot of attention. Make it worthwhile. Hey, fullbacks attract a lot man, of attention. I'm like, most, yo, all right. I can't, <laughs> I can't lie to you, most. I'm going to say three. I'm going to say three years. Yeah. But maybe maybe four years. But I'm going to say three. For three years, Coach Tom came up to me every day and told me to justify my existence. Yeah. Whether I was around people mm-hmm. or it was me and him, mm-hmm. just as he talked to me, just as he talked to me about tr- training me to uh, changing me to football uh, fullback, it yeah. was just me and him. 
it didn't matter. Every, anytime he seen me, one of the first things he was telling me is justify my existence. For like, I'm gonna say three years, I, but I wouldn't real, be surprised though. if it was four. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And <laughs> yeah. that's every day. And think so about that's it, just bro. the type of mentality that mm-hmm. I was being groomed. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I was being groomed in that way. So for me, I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, this is my job. Like, you know what I mean? This is high pressure. This is high tense situation. I'm on the killer bees. We got real legends. We got Hall of Famers on this team. You know what I mean? So it's it's time to show out. Bro. I love that, man. And honestly, man, <clears throat> when we talk in that Coach Tomlin talk, man, that is one of the things that we always say, man. And anytime we have, you know, the current guys or former guys come on and talk about him, they always talk about his ability to motivate, his ability to kind of, you know, find that thing that makes you tick that makes you go and um yeah man yeah. i just wanted to open up the door for you man to also man talk about your relationship with coach tom man what was that dynamic like you've obviously <clears throat> you know talked a little bit about the switching of positions and stuff but just man where where were y'all let during this process man how close did y'all get in everything man man you know you know one of the things that you know i i i, <clears throat> I really appreciated about coach tomlin was like you said, his ability to touch each player different, mm-hmm. and for and his and and the ability for each player to see that each player was getting touched different. You know what I mean? Not fast, like, bro. Mm-hmm. like, like how he would talk to you and and turn you up versus how he would talk to me and turn me up, and then how he would talk yeah. to the team and mm-hmm. turn the team up. And like I said, bro, I'm gonna say three. I'm gonna keep going back to it because it was important to me. But for three years, maybe four. Every single day that man came up to me and told me to justify my existence. Now, mm-hmm. you take it out as you want. Right. But me being a fullback, right. I took it like you know exactly what you tell me. I gotta got show out. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I didn't really realize how much of an impact I had until, like I said, those coach Tomlin and the way he started talking to me and the way he started calling on me in times of need Mm -hmm. and I can't remember what game it was, but I think we was down or something. And we just really wasn't playing good as a team. And at halftime he was pissed and we going out to halftime. And, you know, one thing that I'll never forget is coach Tomlin just, there were several times where he would look at you and he'd be like, you know, I, you know, I need you right yeah, now. You, you know, know what I'm look, saying? You know the look. Yeah, you know that look. Mm-hmm. And one and one specific time, I can't remember the game. It slipped my, my mind right now, but you know, it let me know that I was one of his guys. When he he's like, "Come on, Rosie, like we need you right now. Like we need you to make a team, make a play for us. Make a like, play. You know, yelling Give me a team like, playing make, something. Yeah, like, yeah. Like not not A B, not uh-uh. Boswell, Real not specific. James, not L Bell. Like Rosie, you feel me? Like we need you. Like. And I took pride in turning up the stadium, turning up the team, and making moments. That's what I did. I played for moments. So yeah. for him to tell me that and to know the type of energy that I'm going to bring and the type of trash that I'm going to talk, it was like, you know, it let me know. Like, And, you know, obviously, you know, he got his guys and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, truthfully, I was definitely one of his guys. You know what I'm saying? Like. Even when, you know, little, little small little business things, like you may be hurt, may need to go on IR and stuff. He never did that with me. He, he taking care of you, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He used to take I, care of me. The, the business me? side of it, he, he looked out 100%. I know exactly yeah, what you're talking he used about. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he used to take care of me. And, like, it wasn't like he, he had to do anything dramatic or extra, but, like, he let me know, like, bro, you good. Like, when I broke my foot, you know, we, he's like, no, I want you to travel with us because I want you to see what this playoff experience mm-hmm. is like. You know what I'm saying? Just little stuff That's like real, that. Bro. Like, all right. And now we coach you know do that, I mean? man. Yeah. Like, it's just like, just little stuff like that, man. I'm forever indebted, man. I wish, I, you know, I always watch all the interviews and hope one day he talk about me and my story, yeah. but he don't never have to. You know what I mean? Like, I he don't respect, never have bro. to to be the coach that, that, that I know him as. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, like, I just know that I was one of his guys. I know that, like, the way he talked to me and, and like, he was able to touch me and make me like feel like important, you know, just even though I was a fullback and I was, I know I was important, but like he he didn't shy away from that, but he also kept it like very like, make yourself, make yourself, uh, make it, make it a reason why you're here. You know what I mean? Like I'm counting on you to show, justify your existence is how I took it. Like I'm fighting for you. Make sure you justify why you're here. 
And to give a little context too, man, just during that time frame, man, we're talking 2014 through 2017, 2018, man, the fullback position league wide was becoming obsolete. Teams didn't put yeah. fullbacks out there as a defense. We blitz fullbacks. Wherever the fullback is, yeah. we come in there because we know that's where all the action is, and not every fullback yep. can get them dudes up off of them. But yep. when we see you literally, man, week in and week out doing the things you was doing, that's the part where it's like, all right, that's what you want to see as a fullback, man. That's why you can play him as much as he plays. And then, obviously, the special team stuff too, man. But um, mm -hmm. just giving the listeners a little bit more of that context behind it, man. Um, yeah, no, nah, I mean, and we was playing tough football, bro. Oh, we was no, playing the thing, like yeah. People, people forget, you know, the, the new the new Bengals was definitely a, a fire squad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the old Bengals, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that was war. Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. 2014, bro, 2019, going to sleep. Pittsburgh versus blood everywhere. Cincinnati you know what it is, was man. like, yeah, it was bad. It was bad business, bro. Like you'd be mm -hmm. like, your head would be hurting the next day. Like everybody, <laughs> you'd be like, you I know just, that it's gonna be a tough yeah. game. Mm -hmm. So you know, like just to add a little bit more context, but. You know, Coach T, like, they call him a leader of men and all that stuff like that. But, man, I just – I don't know what you want to call him, but, you know, I know he got a specific way of touching people. You feel me? So, like, whether that be being a man and being talked to like a man or just learning lessons from a coach, hey, I wouldn't have traded it for nobody else, man. Nah, love that, man. Love that. Well, like I said, I got a couple left over here, man. But, yeah, um, I, I got no. Oh, time, I, I ain't man. know where you was at. What I was to say, yeah, I ain't trying to hold Come you up. Hey, look, hey, look, I know you nah. got the next PJ. Where you find two next, man? You on somebody's Come island. On, I, I know it's too, it's <laughs> nah. too cold for you to just be chilling. You ain't just, I, I know, know how you man. do. I got a couple of things. I got a couple of things in the tank right now. I'm trying to get going. <laughs> Pop out. You know how I do. So, hey, look, look. you know, we just, we just staying low until it's time. You know, just deep. like everything else, bro. Like, deep. Rosie, you know, pull up. humble guy. It's the chef. You got the cameraman. And you got his personal. Security, I'll be like, bro, I will be like you when I grow up, man. Stop playing, <laughs> man. I just, I was just, you know, just young, young boy from Columbus. Man. Hey, That's love it, it, baby, love it, man. But um, if you could though, man, throughout your career, man, you made a ton of plays, man. Whether we're talking special teams, but also, man, being on the offensive side of the field, man, where there's big blocks, you touch paint multiple times as well, man. But um, what would you say was your favorite play from your career, though? My favorite play from my career, just yeah. one play. Yeah, what you got for me, man? You you got that that play? You know that play? The one play from my career. If I had to say one play that I'd, I'll never forget, or the one play is my favorite play. Give me both there. All right, I, I, I'm I'm just a the random one, cat. I'm like, the bro, I'm I'm the biggest Rosie fan. Ro Rosie, tell me, man, what's the play that I need to know, Rosie? What's the play I need to know about you, Rosie? What's the one where they like, bro? That's that was the one. All right. Like what would you, you gotta, say that one is, man? I gotta, I can't, I can't front and not act like when I blocked that punt in preseason. That Talk wasn't play. about it, okay, okay. I can't, I can't play myself and say that that it wasn't a lot riding on that play, and for yeah. me to come through at that moment was uh, special, and, and and I proved myself a lot of things that play. But uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'll never forget touching paint, bro. Oh, like, you touched that paint, I, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care what nobody say, man. I be, I hey, tell man, people all like the time. It. I tell people all the time, man. These receivers and stuff, you no shade to nobody on any team, <laughs> nowhere. You know, I never do that. But if if, if I score it every week, <laughs> every single week, <laughs> multiple times a week, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, it's a wrap. <laughs> all right, don't let me score two, three times, catch two hundred. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. I don't, this is different, bro. Touching pain is different, it's bro. Different. You, you you make a hundred, you make a hundred thousand people scream. It's different. You know what I mean? Like it's that do something to you. And I only scored twice. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> and I feel like the man. It do so like, <laughs> so like I couldn't imagine like being like somebody who you know 16, 17 touchdowns a year yeah. or you know I'm like that. So I, I have to say either my block punt in preseason to make the team or the. Uh, um, just that whole Ravens game, you know that that well, eighteen, that seventeen yeah. year, that when I score and then I had to punt the, the kickoff, mm -hmm. like that whole that whole game, I was just on one, and I, you know, I honestly think man, I was really playing for Shea that that game, and 
you know, I was just, I just felt like unstoppable that game. You know what I'm saying? Like, respect, bro. I remember when you hit my man's, you pulled up that shirt, show it down five zero. We said, oh yeah, we on. You know what the day is. You yeah. know what we on today, man. Yeah. Big facts, bro. Shout tough. out to our brother like, right there, yeah. man. I was like, I did some hard shit, bro. That was, bro. You set the tone. Think I was open, bro. You bah pulled up that shirt. We was like, okay, we killing people tonight. We we. He's getting a t shirt tonight. I don't care what has to happen. He's gonna get this t shirt tonight, bro. Yeah, it was real, man. That was real. Yep. Yeah, like so that. that's probably my two plays right there, man. Uh, that, right? that that first that first touchdown when I made that catch, I don't even know what, what that you was. You low key like like, like like yeah, it looked like you had hand hands too, bro. I, I, I salute you, salute Most, you. You know I got hands. They they are you know you, been the hands. The way you talk about it, it, you know, it just sound like your hands is like handsy hands. Yes, yeah? so I'm just like, oh, you got hands. I respect your hands. I was on hands. hands team. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know that. Listen, right bro. Listen, listen, listen. Deep, deep, deep. You know deep, that, right? Deep. The there, there are multiple levels to his team. I was on his team as well, Deke, okay? You heard him say he was on the front line? Ask him what the front line job is versus the back line on his team. Catch the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Catch the rock off deep, the bounce. Deep, you know deep. Ask him what the front line's job is on his what team, was, What was Danny Smith saying <laughs> it was? Deep. Let me tell you, like you know, you know the dude. I'm with you know Rosie. The dude though. in the front line, directly corner. Just listen. Di- directly catty corner to the kick to the kicker. Yeah. Like at ten yards, <laughs> this is where the ball is going. That's me. You know what I'm saying? That's where I was at. Yeah. yeah I, had, I had to make sure the ball <laughs> didn't get past me first, and then. Then my job was to block. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I got I got you. So, so first job was to make sure it got passive, but then it was yeah. the block for the dudes that could catch behind us. That's what like the receivers yeah, and the running back. If, <laughs> if it got that to that point, you know what I'm saying? If it got to that point. I, one front line or to another front line on hands team. Uh did you ever actually want the ball to go to you, or did you always want it <laughs> no, to go okay, over, bro? Question. Never, I'm just, never, never, never. Okay, because I, I, right I, I was like, I never wanted keep to go right behind me. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go smack somebody. Just put it over my head, please. Don't, don't put that ball on me, man. Don't do that to yeah, me. No, don't I do don't that. I, yeah. I used to hate that part of the game. I was like, man, what do you, what do you mean? They about to kick an offside kick? That don't even make sense, right? Heart, I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Nah. So yeah, there's yeah, really no upside for you. No one's gonna remember you catching it. No, but they remember you. Nah, they only gonna remember. They only gonna remember you. We, that, that dude for the we seen a dude get fired behind that, that man. That dude for the Packers way yeah. back 2015. Man, you get fired man, behind that, bro. You know bro. my man? He was going through it, too. Like, fans and stuff. Like, they yeah. was going crazy on him. Bro, they put you on that hands, and you like, bro, why you do that to me? Like, you don't like me today, huh? <laughs> Uh, respect, bro. That's respect. Crazy. The hands team, the hands team. But you know, I was there though. It's love. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it, man. All right, well, the last one I got for you, baby. Talk about that moment for you, man. We say it's the welcome to NF- the welcome to the NFL moment, right? Where, hey, yep. man, it's officially that hey, this man, we here. Whether it was something positive that happened, or like how it is for a lot of us, typically something negative. You're like, hey, bro, I ain't a dummy, dirty. Yeah, this the NFL. We ain't, you know, playing collegially or in high school no more. But for you, man, what would you say was your welcome to the NFL moment? My welcome to the NFL moment was in San Diego. The year the game Mike Vick was playing. Oh yeah, I'm Monday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday night football. Mm-hmm. The L. First walk off. Long, hey. long travel. You know what I'm saying? We in San Diego. We got a couple hours. Yeah. To ourselves, a little free time. You feel a little free time. You know, San Diego is cool. We fire. We got Mike Vick starting tonight. Yeah, man, we go out there and run the same counter play twice back to back. <laughs> now the other side, it's uh, Melvin Ingram. Mm, yeah, San Diego. Yeah, Melvin Ingram. I about to say that's young Melvin too. Yeah, man, we run the counter. The Castro picked him up the first time. We run the same play again. And I don't know, you know, the Castro hardly ever missed no blocks. I'm not saying he missed a block or anything. I, somehow I ended up on Melvin Ingram this time. We don't he know played, how, but played, somehow it he happened. Played, right. he, he played a little different. All I seen was him just same size, same, what is it, same, same, leg, same foot, shoulder. Same foot, same yeah. shoulder, more power. It's undefeated, bro. You know oh, that. Right. As I'm as I'm running towards him, I'm like, man, he's already in same same foot, same shoulder, and I just got out of the stance. I'm like, oh, this ain't gonna be. 
<laughs> and then I don't know. I don't really remember much after that. I just remember like being on my back. And I was like, damn, like, how did I even get down here? And you know, you go back to the sideline, you know, this, this yeah, is the rookie it's moment. Real, it's real. I'm, I'm trying to like ask questions to people, like, hey, anybody know, like, who that dude? Like, man, he kind of strong, man. Man, we got to the meeting room the next day. You know, Coach Tomlin don't leave nothing. Oh, no, he put on, on the big boards. You know that. Come on. And he, he even said it. He was like, what well, this shit, he was like, uh, he so Ingram smash me. Just, just completely same shoulder, same, just. I fell straight on my back. Coach Tom was like, welcome to the league, Rosie. And I was like, at that point in time, that was the hardest I had got hit. Bro, ever. It, I got hit so hard, I didn't even feel it. I just was on my back. Bro, say, yo, did y'all see like, what happened? Y'all seen that dude that hit me, man? He kind of strong, nah, bro. I, was, I, real way, bro. I wasn't trying to draw no attention to myself. I was just trying to see if anybody else was feeling what I was, you know, what I had experienced. And I was like, I was like, I don't know, because it ain't that, supposed dude, to be like the that. The one with no gloves. Y'all see him? Did, did he hit you, bro? What he felt like to you, bro? Come on, yeah. man. He got his fingers taped. Hey, he don't crazy. care, bro. If his fingers taped, he don't care, bro. He's just out here, no gloves. I'm like, yo, you're a psycho. Yeah, yeah. the finger tape. The finger tape. I ain't going to lie. I always watched out for the guy Facts. who had a finger tape. All right, yeah. And it, and, and and me, I know I had to watch out for those guys because my fingers was taped under my glove. Mm, so all right, all right. <laughs> if you know, you know. So if you know, I know, you know. I know what kind of I know what kind of nut he was. <laughs> no effects, bro. Love that right there, bro. Love that, man. But shoot, bro, this was an absolute vibe, man. Like I said, the people definitely definitely love you on this interview man and like i said man we definitely appreciate you taking some time out like i said to hop on with us man but um that's all we have for you bro man we wish you nothing but the best going forward man and uh like i said we have to do this again man man you know i you know i got nothing but love for y'all man i love what y'all doing most my brother forever hey, you man. already know we locked in baby definitely definitely glad we got to share the grass man share the table to get together man so it's always love, bro. Anytime you need me, man, I'm here, brother. Nah, you already know it's the same way, baby. Same way. Appreciate you again, man. All right, bro. All right, peace, peace bro. Yeah. Shout out right there once again, man. Rosie Nix taking some time. Or Roosevelt Nix if we want to be formal. All right. But if y'all was digging that interview, man, hit that like button one time for the coach. And don't forget to subscribe, man. It's a good time talking with the homie right there, man. You know, take down memory lane for a little bit. We get some current stuff, too. I liked. It's good vibe. That was great. Good vibe right there, man. He said he don't think people are gonna remember that uh celebration, huh? <laughs> Him and Claypool. I, mean, those, those are the two. I was like, oh, they're they gonna forget that one, bro. Oh, they're gonna forget that one. Those are the two. <laughs> yeah. I think the Claypool one. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because Claypool, he fought back with his. At least yeah, Rosie, Claypool, he just Claypool went Claypool off. Claypool kind of happened so fast. He had the mo the Rosie one's just, it's way more funny yeah. looking back. The Claypool one, I'm still kind of pissed about. It was so dramatic. Because the Claypool one was very directly uh, related to yeah. that final drive and us trying to win. Yeah. Whereas the Rosie one, it happened after. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't get the we didn't get the first down, so like, it's not like the clock's running or anything. Yeah. Like, the ball's going to the Saints. It, <laughs> so, it, it's way more funny than Claypool. It's like, dude, you cost us a play by yeah, doing that. Yeah, Just being a bonehead. Yeah. It is electric, bro. I literally, I remember, bro. <laughs> I'm at a restaurant. I'm braced up still, bro. I was easy. I was like, bro, what is going on, bro? Not the homies. Oh. <laughs> My man said, yo, it was Danger 4. I got to hit Danger. I got to let Danger know. Look, bro, you caught it straight today, man. All right? Danger down there just chilling, you know, doing dad life. And, yeah, he didn't quarter straight today, bro. So he's in my ear. <laughs> all right, all right, man. I think we got some supers, man. Let's, let's get these things rolling, man. But um, sure. we do, like I said, appreciate each and every one of y'all rocking with us, man. Pittsburgh Tidy, you know, man, we appreciate you rocking with the interview. Rod Dollar, or should we call you Mouse? I mean, like, bro. Mouse Dollars. I mean, he did. My man shouted you out, shouted you out. He said you was fire in the backfield, too, man. Like, yeah. Shout out to you, man. Let's go. And Rod Dolo says he still gets after you, remember? He doesn't yeah, talk yeah. about a semi pro He did say that. Heck there. yeah. Heck yeah, man. No, that was fire right there, man. That was definitely fire. Appreciate you, uh, Tyre Lewis, man. Absolutely, man. From the heart, from the heart. Man, you know, absolutely. Official momentum, I think. Is that, is that where we left off? Yeah, so no, we no, should no, be on no. AJ, AJ Martinez. Martinez yep. says, tell Rosie Rod Dolo is on the podcast, 5-5. Five, five. I'm glad we had that and we was locked in and we was locked in. Yeah. I got that one. Shout out. S. Dresden. 
Drop the 20. Says, if I were the oh, GM, man. the Appreciate Steelers you. go into camp with Fields, Jerzon Newton, Zach Frazier, Maurice, Louis Fow, and Amra, Amon Ross St. Brown. Respect to your show, Moats, and respect to Tate Shannon and Big G, the homies at SCN. Mm, no, respect, respect, man. Opinion. Well, first off, I, I love that you got, uh, you know, Razor Ramon, A hey, Chico, as the pitcher. Definitely digging that, man. Um, in terms of Loki, I ain't gonna lie to you. You threw me off guard. I did not think that you would have this energy super chatting, man. I was seeing you in the regular chat. I like your energy though. I just ain't know you was gonna do it like that. But either way, we're gonna get to you, man. But um, I'm a big fan of bringing Phil's into camp, man. Like I said, I'm back and forth when we talk about cost efficient versus going and get what I think will give us the best chance. And honestly, man, when I'm deciding between who would I want to just, if I got to take the chance, and we're seeing a Kirk Cousins, a Russell Wilson, right? Talked about in the draft, the Bo Nix. I'm like, yo, if I'm going to have to pick one of the options, me personally, I do lean Phil, so I do like that. Um, Zach Frazier, definitely we were talking about him a little bit earlier. Like that, man, addressing the offensive line. And then Armand Ross St. Brown. No, that's not. That's going to cost. That's the only thing I don't like about that. I think he's trying to get $25 million a year. Yeah, that's going to cost. Because he's on the front end trying to get the new money. Like, yeah. he's not old money just yet. So, I don't like that one per se. But, um, shoot, like I said, though, the rest of it I'm cool with, man. Um, And then, yeah, shouting out dead. Yeah. Everybody else, man, certain Tate, Shannon, Big G, the homies at SCN. Respect to the homies over there, too, there, baby. I like it. I like it. Uh, Fish Momentum says Ambition Live at Rivers next Friday. You heard him. And you heard him. Hinting that he wants fields. Hashtag fields. Ooh. I do see people kind of putting they. It's like, yo, are you going with Kenny? Then you got the Mason people. Then you got the We Want Kirk Cousins people. Then we got the I Want Bo Nix people. Then you got the I Want Russell Wilson people. It's like it's pretty cool seeing everybody like in this early portion of it. You know, I'm in the minority. I want the uh, Mason Kenny competition. That's where I'm planting my flag. Ain't nothing and wrong with that. Not too many people are with me. That's because that's just a cheaper option. Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. There is nothing wrong with that option, man. I like your option. I'm not going straight cheap though. I like I like what I saw from Mason, man. Like what I saw from Ace, and obviously I still believe in Kenny. So I like your perspective, bro. I ain't tripping. We not use the word cheap. Oh, okay, okay. Cost efficient. It's, yeah. it's, it's cost more cost efficient. efficient. It's more cost efficient. It's definitely affordable. It was kind of like, but when, I still when, think these dudes got the yeah. upside to be as good as, if not better, than some of the other quarterbacks we're talking about. Well, and that's the beauty of it. You know, that's my take. Meh. I was I, I, a little off of my say, quarterback but... take this year. A little bit off, but uh, that, that's, why year, we, that's why we have another year. Absolutely. That's why we have another year. Well, and the thing is this, man. I can make up for it. There is Hopefully nothing. Kenny can make up for it. Trust me, there is nothing that is keeping Kenny from doing that, right? Kenny is very much capable. Otherwise, he would have never been drafted where he was drafted. He would have never even had the success that he's had to whatever degree we want to say. Cool. But he's had success at this level. So, in all seriousness, man, there isn't something that is saying that he can't do that. The whole issue is just the timing of it. How long does it take? And that's what we're all going to find out this year. And that's part of why we always are, especially when you're talking about just trying to solidify that quarterback position, this is why... A year like right now, this offseason, we're getting so much quarterback talk because we understand the significance of it. But for certain, man, Kenny, there's nothing that says Kenny can't be better than any of these dudes that we've been naming. There ain't nothing that says that. It's just up until this point, we haven't seen him consistently enough display it. So now we're kind of in this weird space of do you continue allowing him time to develop, allowing him time to prove himself while we're adjusting some of the variables surrounding him? Or... Are we saying, man, the clock is ticking on the rest of the roster. We feel like, man, we can go and make a legit run right now. Let's go pull the trigger on this or let's go pull the trigger on this. I think all of those things are legitimate thought processes. It just really goes down to personal preference. And for you, you're like, bro, why do we got to spend money on this when this guy can develop into what we think he can develop into for a lot less? Ain't nothing wrong with that thought process, bro. Nothing wrong with it. And then for the ones that are like, bro, I would much rather just spend on something that I think is a little bit more. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And then you got the Cousins option. It's like, all right, we see what this is. We have a lot more information surrounding it. But we also know some of the negatives surrounding it as well are a lot more defined in comparison to Kenny and 
Justin Fields because they're just younger in their careers right now. So all of them got something that we're going to like, something that we're not going to like. But it's really just going to depend on, like I said, man, what the team ultimately is going to feel makes the most sense with the least amount of that collateral damage, man. But your dude, man, he could definitely step up, man. Ain't nothing stopping him from doing it, man. It's just going to be a long off season. Yeah. The one benefit that your guy has, the guy, the head man has already said, yo, he's back. He's Q. He's going to get a chance to be QB1. So everything for Kenny, he's still in the driver's seat, man. Outside of, like we said, they going out and spinning on a Kirk Cousins. Or Russell Wilson. Outside of that, it's like, yo, you're in the driver's seat in any competition. You're going to get first dibs, man. What do you do with is the question? Because if you go out there and play like a top five guy, it ain't going to matter who these dudes are that we bring in. But you got to do it. Right now, you kind of lucky with speculation because there's nothing that is happening right now. Not you specifically, but for Kenny, it's like we can't see anything good or bad happen right now. So it really just depends on how we personally feel about you. And if we feel good about you, well, you're you can be going upswing right now. And that's where he is. Whereas Justin Fields' cousins, we don't know them like that. So we look at this like, nah, we're going to keep saying negative until we see, you know, you do it here or continue to do it good. That's neither here nor there. But for Kenny, it's like, bro, he's going to get the first opportunity, man. If he ain't starting this season, the only person he could blame would be himself, man. Because he's going to get a legitimate chance, man. Yeah, either way, yeah. it should be. Worst case for Kenny, I think, open competition. Yeah. Worst case, uh, going into the off season, If we don't sign a Mason, if we don't trade for a Fields, I think it leans a lot more his way. Yeah. So yeah. If, he's, if he's not the starting quarterback, it's, it, this off season was a disaster. Yeah. And I don't expect that to happen. Yeah. I definitely don't. I think he's going to respond admirably here. That, there ain't nothing he's, stopping him from responding, he's done it, bro. He, he's done it every time it's happened in-game when yeah. there's been adversity. He responds. In the same way we are praising Mason Rudolph for responding from his adversity, let's allow Kenny his chance to actually show that he can respond. A to a style. Pray for people in this world. The evil has their hearts. <clears throat> nah, that's true. That's the true. devil has their hearts, he said. That's true also. Either way. That's true. Same thing. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Spread positivity and love, man. You know that. I'm a good energy guy over here, man. Shout out to Deke. All right. Good energy. Good vibes. What you ate to eight? Cliff the Dark Knight, I think if KP fizzles out this year, we're stuck with him for two years unless we make a move in the draft, free mm-hmm. agency, or trade this year. The QB draft next year is weak, as is the free agent quarterback class in 2025. I, I just don't think you can be basing your moves off of how good a quarterback class is in yeah. the future because you don't know what pick you're going to have. Yeah. How good, yeah, like how good or bad your team is going to be for that upcoming season to, uh, I guess, slot you at a certain spot in the draft. Like, you, yeah. you can't predict that. And you don't know what some of these quarterbacks are going to do in college. Did anyone project Joe Burrow to have the season he had? Or at Jordan LSU Travis to get hurt when he got hurt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and some of these top classes that have been ranked and predicted to be so high have mm-hmm. also. But all not right. good. Not good at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about the Trevor Lawrence one. That that was such a highly touted yeah. quarterback class. Trevor Lawrence is a top guy, and there's still questions out there about him. Mm-hmm. Like, I still have faith in him. But for a dude that we said was can't miss, or it, just for a class that we thought that was going to be yeah. can't miss, with him, Fields, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, my God, it's been anything but. So that could be the same thing here. Like, what if... Caleb Williams doesn't pan out to be what we expect. Now, again, I still think his floor is really high. He sh- should be yeah. really good. But what if he doesn't? What if he? What if he's Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. Trevor Lawrence asking his first like two three years. Yeah. Uh, Drake May, Penix, McCarthy, Bo Nix. I don't know. What? If, yeah. What if they don't pan out? It, it's. I'll put it to you this way. It's mm. not a far stretch to say <clears> that. <throat> yeah. Some of these guys uh, out of these five or six many project in the first round. Might not pan out. Yeah. That's, like how that's everyone's legitimate, expecting. bro. That's very legitimate. And then for the next quarterback class, you got a Shadur Sanders. You got this one dude from, like, Texas A&M everyone's really, really talking about. Hmm. Like, he's flying under the radar. He's okay. been hurt. But, you know, what if he goes off and has a this crazy Heisman type of season and yeah. catapults himself into the top five? Like, there's there's just so many variables in so many ways. Uh, things can change from now until the next draft. 
Yeah, I guess is what I'm saying. And, just and even, let alone two years, because he said two years. Yeah. yeah, I think it's I think it's insane to yeah just be going off of that. No, I would agree with you. Um, so like, what if what if the, I mean two two is one of those examples. Right? Yeah. Everyone's like tank for two, tank for two. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, he he ended up going number yeah. five. Yeah, honestly, man, I don't, I don't, I mean, I know where your mindset is, Cliff the Dark Knight, in terms of the urgency. I just think that you're pointing it in the wrong direction. I don't think the urgency should be based off of what you feel a potential draft class might be this year or two years from now, because we also know that if you truly are in a bind for a quarterback, if you want to go get one, you can get one. They're just going to cost a lot. But let's not act like we haven't seen team. I mean, the Jets didn't draft Aaron Rodgers, you know. The Denver Broncos, they didn't draft um, Russell Wilson, you know. Seahawks didn't draft Geno Smith, man. So it's like you can find dudes and come in here and play and win. Um, They do cost, though. They do cost a lot. And that's part of it. But um, what I would say more so is I think the urgency to me falls on the side of T.J. Watt. Minka Fitzpatrick. We already said Cam is getting up there, right? Everything that we talk about in our equations, it factors in us having the best defensive player, right? To us, at least, in all of football. And then we got Minka, who's the best or arguably the best safety in football, right? So with that, those dudes are getting older. With that, you do know that clock is starting to tick a lot more. How long is Cam here? We don't know that. So I think if I was going to operate with the, a little bit more sense of urgency, I think I'm more so looking at that as to why I'm, when I talk about it, being a little bit more aggressive or a lot more aggressive with the quarterback market in terms of who I'm trying to acquire via free agency um, or, or trade. You know, I think that's kind of where my mindset is, not what does this draft class look like in the next year or two years? Because to me, the draft is a crapshoot. That's one of the big reasons why you don't see me put as much stock in player picks or in picks or rookies over proven veterans. I would much rather have the proven commodity than somebody coming out of college that I have to hope can learn the game, can stay healthy, can not get swallowed up by the lifestyle and everything else in between. So, you know, that's kind of like I said, my mindset with it. But I definitely understand why you have some urgency, though, with that, though, man. Uh, I just thought this was a cool comment and want to read it. James Moody says, yo, boys, um, I'm at my 82-year-old mother's... No, I'm my 82-year-old mother's caregiver. Oh, it's not, she okay. has Alzheimer's, but without mm. fail, she goes, where are my moats and dick at? I just want to thank hey, for that. Hey, bro, that's dope right there, man. Dude, that, 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 hey, man. And keep being the good dude, man. Like I said, being a caregiver for your mother, man, that's real life right there, man. And those some of the moments you will never forget, all right? So keep showing up for her. Shout out to your mom as well, man. And I respect you as well. I'm putting that in the chat, man. That's fire right there, bro. Robert Bannister brings Shout up a good point. Shout out to you catching that too, bro. I thought Heck it was yeah. a good comment. Heck yeah. Robert Bannister says, shouldn't pass rush win rate mean you have more sacks? Not necessarily. Um, You can beat a tackle. You can be unblocked and a corner can fall down and that ball is out like that. You won the pass rush, but you don't get a pressure, you don't get a hit, and the ball's already out. But did you win the pass the rush? quarterback yeah. could juke you, too. Yeah. So you could whiff. That's the whole reason in terms of, like, why pass rush win rate isn't the same as sacks. But that's also why when we talk about the different metrics, um, me and Deke, we've talked about it before. It's like we talk sacks, we talk pressures, we talk QB hits, because to me, all of those three metrics define what I think an elite pass rusher is. Because sometimes you can get a sack, and that was actually your worst play ever. You blew the coverage. You know what I mean? You were supposed to be dropping, and you rushed. Sometimes a sack comes from the O-line just slides the protection the wrong way, and the quarterback is running. He has nowhere to go, and he just falls down. Sometimes a sack is the guy is running out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage, and you're the closest guy to him. You don't even have to touch him. You're the closest guy to him, so you get a sack. So that's why we don't always just say sack, 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 because... <clears throat> sex can be very we're not very misleading but at times they can be misleading so then we add pressures what are pressures they are similar to the pass rush win rate concept is you're making this quarterback have to throw the ball faster than he would have typically liked to you're not necessarily getting a hit on him but the quarterback is hurried and typically you see the guys finishing right in the frame 
as the ball is released. It's not a hit, but you'll see them being able to walk up on him and kind of, you know, face to face. We've all seen this stuff. And then obviously you know what a QB hit is, and that's the stuff where it's like, all right, hopefully he don't get a flag if he hits him too hard. All right, who you hitting? Don't land on him, that type of concept, right? But that's what us traditional pass rush people, traditional just defense people, those are the metrics that we look at. The pass rush win rate, it's a cool analytic, but to me that analytic does not outweigh those other three metrics that I just kind of talked to you about. So that's why ultimately pass rush win rate doesn't equate to more sacks, but that's also why you've heard me really have issues with that metric always being brought up as if that is the gospel and it's the end all be all because to me i just don't think that tells a accurate part of the story man or accurate enough part of the story aj martinez says maximize the madness diggler five five hold him down uh, respect respect you know we're gonna get right i like this next one Let's go, you dub. We got confirmation that NCA twenty five will be out this summer. Facts. Full reveal in May. It looks like the mascot mode will still be a game mode when it comes out. I mean, whoever played the mascot mode. This is also true. But now nah, it looks cool. Trailer was a little straight, man. Heck yeah. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm excited. Bring Pitt back to uh, its glory from the 70s. Ain't nothing like it, too, man. I already know. I'm fighting with my GMU Dukes now that we on a big boy, big boy roster, too. Yeah. We was already out there before because I, I seen how you look. You was like, bro, you ain't willing to game. It was like, yo, I was, it was on the game. All right. We had we had, a, we had an appearance or two. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I did the NCAA Dynasty. Yeah, we had some appearances, bro. That yeah. wasn't last. That might have been two years ago. Right. Was it last year or two years? I can't remember. Yeah. Oof. Was it two Oof. years? Listen, I don't want to uh, try to write up a. Uh -oh. that I can't cash. Uh oh. Wouldn't that uh -oh. be something, maybe? Uh oh. A podcast dynasty. Come on, man. That, that would be on, pretty man. cool, huh? Come on, man. That would be, it pretty, would be cool. pretty dope. I would agree. It would be dope, bro. Again, uh, Rod Dolly don't hold me to that. Rod Dolly's online league in NCAA. Do, do not hold hey, me question to mark, that. Question mark, question mark. Let's see how I'm feeling <laughs> when the game drops. They said what May they're gonna get yeah. the full like a real trailer, a full, like, trailer. real drop, yeah. and then summer's gonna yeah. come out. Okay. Mm hmm. Now it's they should. It's about time. Here's though, the bro. thing. I know they're probably gonna do the traditional NCAA football schedule release when yeah. they. I think they typically dropped it in July. They shouldn't do that. They should actually. Try to drop it in May going forward or even June. Yeah, beforehand. Just to space yes, it out between I would that agree. and Madden. I would agree. Because Cause it don't that breathe. drops and then Madden comes out like a month back later. Back to back, yeah. Yep. Now, back in the day, I think NCAA was the better game. I would we, stick with NCAA longer we and played, I'd go we Madden like mid-NFL season. Seriously, yeah. And instead, it was just way more fun, too, in terms of building up the dynasty. Starting out with like a small school and then just like seeing it grow up. Oh, yeah, man. It was always blunt. I didn't took me. In fact, I didn't took a Wyoming before it was Josh. I didn't took a Wyoming Cowboys. Absolutely, they didn't been back to bad natties before it was Let's Go Dub. Mm -hmm. I didn't been on that Boise, that that blue turf. Uh huh. I, I didn't, didn't kick us a booty over there. I was a part of a Nevada. You ever had a Nevada going on an undefeated run, bro? It's not like it, man. I wonder if you not can like uh, build new stadiums. Oh, that would be hard. I'll build Pitt Stadium down in Oakland. That would be hard. It. That would be hard, bro. That'd be real sick. Yeah. But it'd be cool if you could only do it once you hit like a certain yeah. threshold of prestige or whatnot. Like you gotta earn it. You gotta earn the no, stage. Big facts. Big facts. And, and Richard Arbizo, no, I am not about to play with that wag school that coach Tom went to. You know I ain't finna say they name. They bums. They suck. They wish they was James Mattis. Shout out to Richard Arbizo. <laughs> A two A style salute to all the black men and women who invented everything that they didn't get credit for, which is about everything. <laughs> you know what? We can salute. All right, it's Black History Month, so well, uh, respect, respect. Uh, Cal Monier, one of the most lit games I've been to was the Steelers Giants preseason game, twenty seventeen. In pregame, OBJ uh -huh. caught a filthy one handed snag joins. right in front of us. Yep. Got autographs from you. Mm -hmm. Rosie and a pick with the cash. Nah, respect, respect, man. Now nah, that was a vibe. I know exactly what he's talking about, man. That was a TJ first game. That's that yeah. That's my pick game, bro. I never when I caught my little pick on Gino. Never forget that one. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's to be. I like Gino. To my time, I like Gino a lot, bro. He's a good dude. Yo, young. <clears throat> PFF mock sim players. The Steelers picked the most in the first. 
Jackson Powers, mm-hmm. Johnson, 26% of the time. Quinion Mitchell, 15% okay. of the time. Terry and Arnold, 11%, and J.C. Latham, 6%. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, trust me, man. Our mock draft season is going to be coming up soon enough. We ain't ready just yet. Don't don't send them just yet. Don't send them just yet. It's coming soon, though. All right? Definitely coming soon. I don't know who this J.C. Latham is. I think that Terry and Arnold is Alabama corner. Quinn yeah. Mitchell is the corner from Toledo. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then that, Powers is the yeah, center. he's the center. Yeah. All right. Now, I felt like you did this on purpose, but uh, you, 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 you missed one. I feel like you did it on purpose, though. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel, I I feel did. like you did it on purpose, bro. Shout, shout out to Richard Arbizel, but I pull feel like up. Deke did this intentionally. Um, mm-hmm. It's nowhere to be found on my screen right so, now. So, 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 so Richard asks, he says... I'm not ducking it. He says, son-in-law bunking with you on vacay moats. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I was wait, like, huh. wait, why would I skip that? I, just, huh, I, was I, would, like, I would definitely read that. Because one. you wanted me to read. I feel like you wanted me to uh, specifically read this one out loud. No, I'm just no, like, no, no. huh. I was like, of all the ones to read out, you done read everyone beforehand. I was over here waiting. I'm like, I'm going to let him get like two, three in and just see. I'm going to just see. I'm going to play dumb. And I was like, oh, so he really just gonna make, I gotta going to make that one? I, just stop it. Why would you even? No, no, don't even put that out there, bro. No. And it's nothing to give him. No, bro. I said, a family vacation. I don't, I don't want to. The circle. You see the circle, Dick? It's the circle, all right? I'm not selfish, but let me get my selfish circle for just a couple of days, all right? I just need a couple. Just, no. Just stay. No. All right? It's just... He's good for the top golf type of vibe right now, right? It, he, he even made Monster Jam. He got a Monster oh, Jam. Wow. See? Salute him, right? I ain't even Moving dropped no out. pick. He, he even got a Monster Jam, all right? Shout out, okay? No vacay yet. That's a lot, bro. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, I've been turned over a new leaf, and this is a selfish vacay too. Yeah, this it's, this is like the, we this didn't isn't even like the planned one in the summer or anything, bro. We weren't even supposed to be taking the trip. You know how I feel about school. I'm like, babe, listen, I need one. <laughs> She's like, all right, babe, you and the ass, we got you. So, yeah, yeah, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, you gonna have to miss You'll me be with stressed that one, bro. Out on this vacation. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I don't need none of that on this one. This this is just a me one. All right, I don't ask for a lot of me stuff. Okay. In fact, I'm like the opposite of me. I'm like, yo, y'all take it. Don't don't ask for me. But but this is a me one. I need me one. Just, I, don't, I don't ask for much. I just need one though, Deke. So no, he's he's not coming on this one. All right. But I'm I was I was strategic though. You see how you see you heard Top Golf and then you heard Mustard Jam, right? Because see, I, I understand my daughter. I was like, all right, y'all growing. I get it. All right, I get it. it you want to see your guy? Okay, cool. All right. He could pull up. Okay, we'll go. Just, Okay, I'm an actions guy. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, go, I ain't a verbal dude. I'm an action dude. All right, so ch- he's alive. Everybody's good, right? So there we go. Okay, all right. So yeah, but yeah, I definitely feel like you did that on purpose, though, Dick. Nah. That's all I'm saying. It felt real personal when I read it. I was like, bro, why nah, you? Of all this, you just gonna read? You just gonna leave that one? That's crazy, nah, bro. If, yeah, if I would have skipped it, th- there's a chance it's it just crazy. goes off into it's the crazy. ether and it's never read. It's At crazy. least me reading it, I'm making sure it's yeah. getting thrown out there. It's crazy, though, I would, bro. I wouldn't have skipped that one. It's crazy. I'm just like, man, don't, don't. You, said, I was about to start sweating again. You know, I get hot when you go when you have me asking these questions. Like, <sighs> <sighs> so yeah, man. Richard Arbizo, this just came in. He's asking, when are we getting the most moats post arm around him though? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Why you why you choosing violence today? What's this about, Richard? I thought it was home. I thought it was good. There was all love around here, baby. The boy said the I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey man, you hey, hey man. All right, wait, wait, we working. It's a work in progress. All right, it's a work in progress. It's a chill out. Chill out. All right. But that's a lot. That's that's a lot, Richard. That's a lot. Yeah. I don't even think we've been on the same side. No, no. We passed the we passed the test though. We passed the line test. That, that worked. Yeah, ain't no leaning in. Yeah. Okay. We straight right there. Standing straight up. Yeah, you better believe that, man. All right. Say. Johnny Utah, what happened? Wait a minute. Deep, you should hang with him, bro. You hang with him while I'm gone. He was bro. asking about my golf game. Yeah. Yeah. He was eyeing you, bro. Until until I broke out the secret. I said, all right, you think you go. Wait till you see my homie. Wash him. He ain't want no power in here. All right. Mm-hmm. Starting off the season strong, man. Playing good, yeah. 
Just know, man. If it ever comes a time, I'm just, D. I don't, I don't ever ask D. But I need you come wash him real quick on this golf course. I'm <laughs> wash him, wash him. All right. I can't do it like I want to do it. So I need you to wash him in two. Will it be breeze. me and you on a team, or you just oh, you know, take you know, it's me and you on a team. You know, it's me and you on a team. But worst case, it'd be one on one, and I'm just gonna gas it the whole time. I just wanna ride in the car and just talk cash the whole time because I know you could deliver. I can't deliver to the level that I want to talk. So that's why you know what I'm saying. Tell him to get a guy. Yeah, tell, tell him to get someone. We two on two match. Look, look, look. I ain't ready for all that just yet. You, you okay. about to throw me out there? They, they, they on their side. They're, they're, can we go play? You want to play? It's I'm like, confident, dude. Like you saw me that one time. You know I feel nice, bro. We played. What was it? Yeah. A year ago? Yeah. At the one course. I'm way better. There's than There's a two some behind us. I was like, let's just play them. Two v two. Indeed. I'm you were, you way were a little. Better. You were a little nervous about well, that. Well, because back then, I man, I wasn't as consistent. All right. And we it, played them good. We played them down to like the last tour. We did. We and, played and them good. We lost I was. By one. I was a little bit of a weak link. I was weak link. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was weak link. All right. I'm a lot better this oh, go yeah. around than back then, though, oh, bro. Yeah. I've seen you play. Yeah. I wouldn't even be tripping now if we ran up on them. Yeah, but back then, yeah, I was sweating. I, I didn't, I, man, I was, hey, I was like, you gonna carry me? Please carry me. Just, just come on, Dick. If you carry me, I'll get the brewskis afterwards. All right, but you gotta carry us. <laughs> Johnny Utah, what happens if Kenny fails and next year's draft class is the same as Kenny's? Kind of screwed then as well. I mean, that is accurate, but at the same time, we can't control the future to that extent. So I think that you still just have to let this play out. Whatever decision we make, there are gonna be some potential highs to that but all of this still has some potential to go belly up let's be real whether we talk about returning with kenny whether we talk about bringing mason rudolph back heck we could go spend all this money get a justin fields and he can be exactly what some people think he is right just a great athlete that does not play quarterback you can go get kirk cousins spend all that money and then we're like okay now we're the vikings we are winning a lot of games we're scoring a lot of points but we keep losing first second round of the postseason like, or just yeah, yeah. yeah this ain't even like that much better but right now we weren't able to add to our roster maybe yeah. as good as we could oh, instead of us being the seven seed now we're the five seed you know what i mean but we still kind of in that same boat so it's like all of this has its potential to be bad and that's part of why the conversations are how they are. It's like, yo, we talk on what we think could work and what we think couldn't work. And then from there, us individuals are kind of going to lean one way or the other to what our personal, you know, what we think is the best option. But at the end of the day, all this stuff right here, man, yeah, it ain't 100% certain for any of these dudes, man. Yeah, I mean, he even starts off the comment by saying, what if yeah. Kenny doesn't work out? What if he does? What if he does? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Uh, Young Shad 101, we should have never gotten rid of Derek Watt if he won a fullback. Now, um, it just depends on, you know, how you viewed him. Now, granted, the times were different in terms of with Matt Canada, he wasn't utilized as often. And so I do remember people being a little bit upset about, you know, or not upset. Watt they just, was here to bring up TJ morale. Yes, that cuz it was negotiation time, bro. I don't think we time, really bro. missed out on Watt that much. Yeah. I think we yeah, he would he play came maybe when it was the two offensive time. snaps on average. Yeah. Really never get the ball. Mm -hmm. I don't remember him doing anything crazy on special teams either. Yeah. With all due respect. With all due respect, but that was a part of the argument um even from a special team standpoint because that was when we decided to give him the same contract that Tyler Matakavich got to go to Buffalo. And Obviously, Tyler is still, you know, one of the top special team guys, double-digit tackle guy. He's been like that since being here. So I do remember that part of it. But, um, yeah, I'm with you, Deke. I don't remember us utilizing Derek Watt to that extent where it was a, we should have kept him or never got rid of him. No, we yeah. were just hoping with him being around, TJ would take a little a bit less of a pay deal, cut. yeah. DKB17 from the 660 Trenton, Shout Missouri. Out. Connor Hayward, the fullback, question mark. I think he's capable. To me, I think he's more of a Will, uh, Will Johnson if he's playing exclusively fullback. Um, you heard Rosie talk about Will Johnson. Um, Will was that mix between H-back, right? Wasn't really a tight end, was kind of short but athletic. Wasn't really a fullback either. I thought, you know, he moved a little bit too well for what we deemed a traditional fullback, but they kind of played him in that in-between. You think about Connor Hayward in terms of how we've used him, um, these past two years, he's been that version, right? Not a true line you up in the backfield and have him lead block up through the A gap and the B gap on an ISO. Nah, but you will see him 
you know, try to position block the edge of it, get the edge on a toss play. You also see him run routes. We've seen him be in the slot and take a vertical, you know? And your boy, nice throw him catching it. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see him do some of that. So I look at Connor more as H back tight end, whereas when we're talking true fullback, we're thinking of like, like I said, like I said, the Rosie Knicks, the OG battering ram type, you know, a guy that's going to be in here and your job is to protect the president. All right. So you go and yeah, you run into that 300 pounder, you run into that linebacker to keep him clean and keep him free. I don't know if Connor's trying to sign up for that job, man. That's that's a different type of animal, man. Yeah, yeah I don't know. If it, yeah. It's a good fit for him. Yeah. And I like Connor, but that's like I said, that's a different type of animal, man, as a defender. You heard what we talked about with fullbacks, man. We don't see them as, oh, they just out here. Fullback come up here. Everybody in Tana come up, and we all trying to figure out who's going to knock them out first because we know the ball carrier coming behind them. It's a mindset and the mentality that's going to come with that. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm not trying to put Connor in that scenario. The same way I wouldn't put Pat Frymo for Darnell Washington in that scenario. They can block, yes, but they aren't blocking like a fullback needs to block. Yeah, we need a, yeah. a cow use check or something. Right, like that. I'm like them totally different collisions and speeds and violence. Yeah, mm-hmm, absolutely. Shout out to Quan Summer, man. I appreciate you reminding everybody in the chat and myself. Hit that like button one time for the culture. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And while we reminding myself and you to hit that like button, don't forget we also got some giveaways going on, man. Got a giveaway on this channel. Like I said, man, announcing the winner in a separate video next Thursday, all right? But check that one out, man. Just showing some love, all right? A couple items, man, signed, giving them out. And then also on the shoe channel, kicking it with most for all my sneakerheads out there. Giving away a pair of Air Jordan 1s, all right? Mids, the uh, Magic Embers on that channel. I right? so check that out when you get a chance. And, uh, yeah. All right, now I'm back. I'm good. Shout out to Quan Summer, though. Need you to remind me of that. Man, the Kenny hate just keeps rolling in from the chat. They keep going? Why are they coming at your mans? Oh, uh, man. Who's it now? Uh, there's just multiple ones. <sighs> and the reason I, I bring it up is because <sighs> I'll admit, <sighs> some of them are funny analogies. Like, Uh-oh. <laughs> like, I, I appreciate some good humor, but <laughs> not directed at my guy. Come on. R respect. Let's, let's stop that. R respect, respect, respect. Now, now, now I'm interested. All right, I'll read a few. <laughs> I'm interested I'm now, happy, bro. says, Kenny thinks he needs a passport to cross into the end zone. Hey, yo. All right, y'all play it. Okay, all right, all right. Tony Daniel says, hey, Noriega, Kenny treats the end zone like the world treated COVID. So y'all really playing games. They playing with your best. All right, they will play with your best. They will play with your best. Yeah, can we replace like, with Kenny best. with Mitch or something? Why are they playing with your best, bro? And I, I'd why, maybe laugh. Why Mitch gotta those. get a shot, bro? Dang, bro, Mitch ain't even employed no more. You still, st ah, <laughs> dang, bro. Mitch is is probably on a flight to Chicago or somebody's beach, right? I like Mitch too. Dang, you just ah. Those like, three oh, games were terrible. This is this is true. This is true. Yeah, it was abomination. Yeah, absolute abomination. Yeah. Fish momentum. Shout out to Knicks. Mitch, check your inbox. Hashtag ambition. Will do. Will do, man. Let's get it. And yes, definitely shout out to the dog, Rosie Nicks, man. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Joe Gerbis, I love Kenny, but I'm worried Fields beats him out. But you think Kenny resigns if Fields were to win and be our franchise? Love the show. Deke, how about Madden? Madden still out indefinitely for that. With hope of return, though. With hope. There it is. There it is. I'm definitely coming back, at least for that college football. I got to. Bro, we ain't had NCAA in forever, I would like to bro. get some momentum going into that though with some some Madden gameplay yeah. so I it's it's there it's it's on my mind trust me hey look man remember you can always start it up when you ready to start it up too man ain't nothing holding you back it's only you like I said I got some equ you, equipment changes some, yeah. yeah some stuff going on setup change like yeah. I'm figuring some stuff out here and, and, and take your time bro don't let them rush you man thanks yeah don't nobody put and don't I, nobody I put Deke in the box man vacation coming up yeah I've also taken a fair amount of time uh, in February up to this point. Yeah. Haven't been as active, but I just well, I, need, that, I need this time. That's because you, you was in Colleen, Texas last night. <laughs> we know about you copping the flight. Don't, don't act like we don't remember that. All right? You hopped the flight. We know that. That's already been confirmed. If y'all don't know, check the beginning of the show. Deke was active. All right. Deke was hopping on private flights last night, and he got back at some point today. We are not sure when. But, yeah, Deke was in the 254. That's Colleen, Texas, and we are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania now, all right? So, yeah. 
Joseph Donovan says, Deke, keeping all the receipts for next season. Kenny, I'm with you, Deke. All right. Hey, man, keep got, the receipts, bro. I, I, I got someone in my corner. Thank you. Donovan, jo- Joseph Donovan and John Easton. John Easton, definitely. John Easton out there with you, bro. He's not on the Mason side of it, though. He's on the he's, he's kind of like on his own island. But he, he, he knows where your true heartstrings are. You, I just, you I just want to win you, games. But you would be more happy if Kenny was doing it versus Mason. Ah. Uh, I don't care. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't care at this point. As long as they're both winning, sure. But if they're both winning and we had to choose which one you're going to feel a little bit more happy, one point to pit. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. When I see GMU guys play well, it makes me feel better. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I think I'll have more bravado in my rants, for sure. <laughs> Kenny's doing it. Kenny's leading the charge. Deacon be in this trade. I told I, you. I think with the Mason, like if he's balling out, I think we all know in the back of our minds, like we all doubted him. Let's just be real. We all doubted him. It's not like, it's not like we all stuck with him like so much. And we're just like, yeah, Mason. I always knew. Although those Man. those guys came out of the woodworks the last bro. Few weeks of the we season. was like, where did y'all come from? Where was this? Everyone knew Mason yeah. was the guy. I've been calling for Mason this whole time. Oh, all right, all right, all right. You got it. Uh, okay. Does Kenny uh, resign if Fields wins out? No. Uh, <laughs> not, not, I don't think so. I think he's going to stick around. I think he'll stick around. What, what say you, though, Deke? Did... Yeah, he's under contract. <laughs> I think he wants to get paid. He's going to say, man, F it. I ain't start. You can have the money. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't, I don't. see that happening. As Dresden Motes, you played ball. Pick it or Fields, no shenanigans. I already told you. I said this yesterday. I like Phil's. The big thing in terms of why it's a debate is because of what it's going to cost to acquire him. We're looking at, what, a second-round pick? That's what they floating around, hopefully. But you know also that if you're giving up a second-round pick for a quarterback that is a former first-rounder, that, yeah, you're also going to be more likely to pick up the fifth-year option, which is going to be about $25 million for Justin Phil's. To me, when I watch Justin, I see – a ton of talent i see a ton of potential i see a ton of the things that you can't coach like put my foot in the ground and run 70 80 yards past everybody because i'm faster than you you can see him throw rocket type pass you're like okay this dude has an insane arm when he is fundamentally sound he's putting his feet in the ground knows where he's going with the ball going through his rotation his uh his um going through his checks and his rhythm and his routine, it's like, man, he looks great. I, I say he looks great at times. But the flip side is this. He does have some really bad habits. And those bad habits are what ultimately keeps his play from being up here the whole time and why it's like this. So essentially, man, you just got to take that chance on if you think with the right coaching and the right system it can work out. Me personally, I do. Because I say to myself, I've seen Kenny in this situation what if a Justin Fields was in this exact same situation then? If I'm already saying to myself, passing-wise, these dudes gave me the exact same, but Justin Fields has already broke a record in terms of with his legs. We already know that that is an elite characteristic NFL-wise. Um, to me, I'm just saying, well, shoot, if they both pass him about the same right now, what happens when that arm develops? Because we already know he got these legs. Wow, we got a system where you got a coach that is not going to have you under 500, where you got a defense that can create turnovers and keep you afloat in a lot of games. That is, you know, how I look at it. But at the same time, if I don't want to spend that type of money, then I'm about to talk myself into Kenny. And that's, you know, the pros and the cons with it right now in the sense of, like, how much do you want to spend on it? Because you're taking a chance one way or the other. It's just, do you want to take that chance and have to cut a little bit more money on the front end? Or do you want to save some of that money, but you take this chance and it could really, you know, feel like how we felt at times last year. But shout out to S. Dresden, though. Uh, Sean McCartney, we should trade up for... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the homie from uh, Penn State. That's the... Let me make sure I got him right. Hold on. Luma Waya. Yeah. Fashion Oof. Uh, yeah, the offensive tackle from Penn mm-hmm. State. Yeah, I was about to say I was going to... Took about 15 seconds. I was going to try to see how to how to pronounce it. Yeah, I was going to get you a... Give an effort there. Get you get you with well, the, the fanatical. Yeah. That was close enough. Yeah. Say, can you say it again real quick? I'm just going to say it's the <laughs> offensive tackle from Penn State. He's projected like top 10, I think. Yeah. What's he, is he asking or no, he's just saying we should trade up? We should up. trade up, bro. Yeah, that's what he's saying. All right. I don't I care. I mean, what? You got your book your book tackles then? You got, yeah, right and left. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. 
Richard Arbizo. When we get in the, uh, I already read that one. That's the. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's crazy how you just found that one twice now. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh-huh. Deeks baby mama. Whoa. Got a comment here. When we get in the son-in-law interview. Whoa. <laughs> what is up with your people today, Deke? What's this? I'm trying to just enjoy a couple of days with my toes in the sand and just unplug. That might be one of and the why y'all best coming? comments from Deke's baby mom. Like, why y'all doing all this? That's a lot. That's that. Yeah, man. You got easy, big fat. Easy, easy, Deke's baby mom. All right, easy, Deke. I know y'all, he, clearly y'all weren't talking last night because you was in Texas last night. So I don't know what you was telling her or where she, I don't even know where she's located at right now. All right? She might be in Memphis. Yeah, I think she's a Memphis girl. Okay. But, uh, yeah. We, when we're doing a lot of interviews right now, I, what, the phones don't be working like how they supposed to work. So when we do a lot of interviews for Afro, yeah. We ain't really Honestly, I bet you if you ask the chat. No, we're not about to do this. What interviews would you want to hear right now? He might be in the top five. No, no, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Stop this. I bet you. Of all no, the people not. on the no, earth. No, absolutely not. Oh, uh-uh, nope. I think mm-hmm. Big Ben's in the mix. Ben, the Lev Bell interview yeah. for sure. Yep. After that, I, I think he he might be three. Nah, you 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 just bumping him up into the ranking. Like, that's, no, nah, man. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. We, it's all good. Of all the people we could get on here no, for No, man. It is all good. Like I said, I'm just trying to enjoy this. It's the last show if I go, go on my trip. ID. Right, don't do me like this, man. Don't do me like this. All right, we just vibing. It's just a vibe. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's top three. No, 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 no. I no. think that's top three. No, 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 no. The, the Noriega interview. There we go. There. How about the Noriega interview? All right. They like Noriega interview. I think they yeah. prefer the son in law. They like Noriega. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Richard Arbizo then has a comment that says, When's Deke's baby mama interview? At least one of them. Now, see, we can get behind the baby mama interview, Deke, because we do be having questions about you. We like, yo, what, what be going on with him, man? Like, like, what's happening, huh? Talk, talk to see, us. See, the problem with those is. It's going to be a tell all. Well, no, there's just there's nothing formed in reality with that. Did you never Whereas know, like, bro? like, the son-in-law, like, we, we know he exists. Time out, time out. Why do you keep saying son-in-law? Like, where did that come from? That's the from? chat. Like, it's just yeah, on the top yeah, of my mind yeah, right now. No, why, why is that on the top of your mind? That doesn't sorry. sound like it should be on the top of your mind. Yeah, it's, no. It's, uh, that's what they keep calling. It's just, I'm sorry. It's stuck in my head right now. Well, I'm referring to him as you, you know how you was like, don't call it a cheaper option? Can, can, we, can we come with another word than son-in-law? Can we just, yeah. What, what, what do you prefer? I, I don't. I don't know. Just, just something other than that. Yeah. A f- friend of the family. There friend of the family. It's a friendly oh, family. All right. It's a friend of the family. I can do that. Yeah. yeah. It's not a maid man, but he's a friend of the family. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sean McCartney. Just remember, Deke. They these same people who hated Mason now love him. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm probably thrown in that category. I never hated Mason though. Yeah. I, I never like rooted against him or anything. I think there were people that. Rooted against Mason, just yeah. like absolutely despised him. Yeah, I would agree. I just thought he wasn't getting the job done. That's it. And I wouldn't have, to be honest, too, I wouldn't have felt good about going into 2022 with him being our QB1. But that's the beauty of hate new information, though. That's the beauty, that's the beauty of new information, though. And I would agree. Hate, hate is definitely a strong word, man. Yeah. Ethan Leach, I support the team and QB1. Pittsburgh, let's ride. Let's ride. I like that. And I think that's the energy, man. I mean, we can all, we're all going to have our, you know, guy that we're rooting for, whether it's publicly or privately. But at the end of the day, man, and this is why I'd be glad every time you bring it up, man, to kind of bring it back full circle. It's like, yo, whoever is out that is giving us the best chance to win games, bro, that's what it's about. And that's the same way that we saw people transition from we love Kenny to we hate Mitch to, oh, now we love Mason. Why do we start loving Mason? Because he was producing, man. It doesn't matter who it is, what his name is. Just come out there and show us that you can get the job done. And if you do that, man, we're going to rock with you. We're going to love you because that's what we are here as part of Steeler Nation, man. But we got to get that part done. You know, so let's see who QB1 is, man. We're going to find out. Jay soon Swizzle, why not bring the checkbook out for the most important position in all of team sports? I would agree. And that's kind of where, you know, you've heard me a little bit more now saying the whole cost efficient option versus spending more on something that is just more proven Uh, or we feel, you know, has a higher ceiling than this than these other guys, you know. I do kind of lean that way because I've seen what happens when you try to cut corners. I've seen what happens when you try to, 
you know, make do it that position and build up everything else around it, you get these games where, like you said, it's, man, we got to go out here and everybody has to play perfect and hope that this quarterback doesn't kill us. Hope that this quarterback doesn't make the big mistake. That's not a good feeling. You know, just because it might be less expensive, that's my only hesitancy, you know, with that. And that's why I do lean more to spend it more because outside of my time in Pittsburgh, the other years that I played, it was without a top quarterback. And it didn't matter how good we felt. Didn't matter how much talent we thought we had. When you don't have that guy at that position, none of it matters. And that's, like I said, the frustrating part. Now, we are not 100% sure that that's the case here. Kenny Pickett could very well develop into that guy. Could very well do that. Mason Rudolph could very well develop into that guy. But I do think that we all, and the organization included, we're all going through that phase of, what do you want to hit? You know, you placing a bet on something. Which one of them do you want to bet it on? Do you want to, you know, bet it on Kenny? Do you want to bet it on Mason? Do you want to bet it on the combination of Mason and Kenny? Do you want to bet it on Phils? Do you want to bet it on Cousins? Do you want to bet it on somebody in the draft? Either way, we all about to take a chance on one of these dudes, man. And we just hoping that whoever the team picks is the right guy. Hopefully it's one of our guys, right, that we've been hauling about. So that's kind of how I look at it, man. But, um, yeah, I'm all for it, Jay Swizzle. I'm all for cutting the check, man. Uh... I would be too if we were getting like Justin Herbert. I, like honestly, the, that because that's the uh, to me that's how I view like the Fields, the the Cousins, the Wilson, like some of these like outside mm-hmm. uh, potential moves. I, I view them as kind of the workaround way yeah. that I don't feel like giving up assets for because mm-hmm. I'll take my chances with what we got in house. Mm-hmm. Like that's just how I feel because I think we can get similar similar exact same or, or potentially even better play out of Mason Rudolph or Kenny Pickett versus some of these other options. Mm. And again, it is the, the, I guess more cost efficient way, but I, I'm not even like looking at that. I just, I want to see if we got a guy and mm. that's why I think this is such a, a big year for Kenny or for Mason. And then you see how this year plays out and you know, that, yeah, then you, you got to figure things out for, 2025 then like go all in try to get a trade trade up in the draft get you know i mean get get a bona fide star in there yeah. you're just resetting the clock essentially to so, get the franchise so basically all you what you just said is you're on the same page as everybody else we're just a year off a lot of people are already there just this year you're saying you're you'll be like that next year that's all that is literally that's all it is bro and there's nothing wrong with it. But if you think about it, that's what you just said, right? If you see enough this year that confirms to you that, man, all right, this dude or both of these dudes aren't it, you said you're going all in for whoever you got to go get. I just don't think all in is getting fields or, like, Kirk Cousins or anything. But the, To an extent, it, that is here, all in, bro. the problem. Like, what, what guys are available that you feel great about going all in for right? yeah. they're probably not available like a herbert or burrow yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. It, it doesn't come around too often well but yeah but those just, guys are the proven commodity so for them they cost a yeah multitude and i would do that and, and, stuff, and i would do that i would uh, yeah i would write the checkbook for them but for some but of these see, other to guys me, that's kind of crazy that you would go to that extent to try to get one of them if i got and, herbert or burrow but think about you're gonna, but you're gonna destroy your cap and draft picks trying to get one of them dudes but you got a chance to get like i said whether you moving up in the draft or if you was trying to find a younger like i said a guy like that it's like man i just like or it could just be how you view feels that could be it and if you don't view feels like you think he's a good quarterback that could definitely be it to me though i'm like all in i'm doing that right now to go get feels and i'm saying to myself bro I didn't have to give up all this, and I got something that I already think can develop clearly into a Justin Herbert, and I like him even more if I can get that passing what I think it's going to be. We're going to pass Joe Burrow also because he got the legs and Joe Burrow don't. But that's just how I view him. Like I said, if, we don't view, if you don't view him that way, you ain't going to think of it like that. But we also know that everybody views these players differently. Yeah, I, for, for that type of conversation of like bypassing Herbert and Burrow, I just would have liked to see more from them from these yeah. first three years. Like I just, 
I see the upside. I just it's, I don't see him hitting that. But at think all. about it. We're speaking on upside. The same we speak on upside with Kenny. So like you would look at Fields and you say you don't see where he could catch a Justin Fields or he could catch a Joe Burrow. It's people that look at Kenny and they say they don't see how he can catch what Mason did the last four games. And you think even with Mason the last four games, it was still more exclusively arm. It wasn't what we're talking about in terms of what we view some of these freaky freaky dudes where it's like you got arm and legs. Fields intangibly wise has the arm and legs part and he's already proven the legs part that's the whole part of you know why he's the lightning rod I'm, yeah i'm not banking my future on fields legs it's a part of the equation mm-hmm. like y- you got to get the passing down like yeah. y- you really do to be successful for mm-hmm. a decade plus and, and to be a franchise guy yeah. in the league. Can Lamar, and we've seen I Lamar mean, we saw that. Lamar, we were Lamar talking Jackson about Lamar. and Josh Allen. And what did both yeah. of their teams do? What did both of those players you, mean to them? And to me, I look at Phil's and I'm like, so you got all the intangibles that if I'm going to talk Josh Allen or Lamar, you're going to have all these intangibles that Kenny or Mason are not going to be able to have that match up with those two type of dudes. But you know I love Josh Allen too, so that's another reason why I'm like, yeah, bro, you got some of that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, it's the upside we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, you got to get that passing down first, right? You, like you really do. But with Kenny, he still has to get the passing down first. But also the question is, can he ascend to that? Because that's part of the debate with him. If you can't do it athletically, then it has to be exclusively arm. And up until this point, he hasn't shown exclusively arm. That he can. So that's part of why I'm even, you know, as adamant to an extent as I am about just alternative options to come in here and see, okay, maybe we need something different to push this. Maybe we need something different in this building, man, to at least give us another vibe because Mason and Kenny are still very similarly or similar athletically. None of them are that true unicorn that we're talking about. But that's going to cost a lot. That costs a lot. And it's still a very big question mark, man. And that's the part that I get your hesitancy, and that's the part that keeps me a little bit hesitant about it. Because it's still a question mark, bro. It's still a question mark. No matter how many of the intangibles, no matter how many of the cool highlights, it's like, bro, it's still a question. Yeah. That's a second round and a $25 million question, though. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, you gotta get like you gotta get the yeah. passing down. I, and I, maybe maybe I was a little too harsh there and saying like he's got to get the passing down right now. But like you gotta have no, serious improvements, for that. especially where he's at in his career, bro, going swear. into year four. Yeah, because if you don't have that, you could get away with stuff with the legs. It obviously can help an offense, but long term, you you it's gotta get the passing. It's not enough. It, it's, absolutely, no, it's bro. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see here. What else we got? I think a few more just All rolled right. in. But say, cause we already at six forty, boy. So you know we good, good, man. We just vibe, yeah. day, man. Okay, that was Jay Swizzle. I think it's it's just to me. You get what I'm saying? Some no, people, no. some people, to me, the way they're talking about Justin Fields, it's like, man, man, I would think we're getting Justin Herbert in yeah, this see, type of trade. I don't agree with it like that. It's yeah. like this slam dunk guaranteed guy yeah. over Kenny Pickett. It's no, a it's lock. Like, that. Mm. It's like if you're bringing him, in, whatever. Like I don't like giving the assets up for him, but I still think it should be a true competition. Well, my my thing was this. If he was all of that, let's be real, we would have seen it a lot more consistently. It still is some legitimate questions. It's just the intangibles that are what <clears throat> the intangibles, the age, and the fact that he was in Chicago. I think all of those things are what makes him so unique and so interesting. Is because if he was coming out today, like we talked about, he is the sexy. That's what you want. In today's NFL, that's that's the prototype right now, or the new prototype. Whether we're talking Anthony Richardson's, right? I'm talking about a Joe Milton, right? It's like all of them and them saying a Malik Willis. They all in that same vein to some degree. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. So it's like, this is that framework. And we have at least got a chance to see some of it already translate to this level. But the rest, we do got to see more coming on. And that's going to be the big thing. But like I said, man, regardless, if we get him, if we don't, or even, like I said, with... uh. If it is Kenny or Mason, they all going to get a true chance to, you know, show what they could do, man. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we still got to see what the Bears are going to do with him. Yeah. Because he's I'm, still not I'm going. Seeing, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing reports that they're seriously thinking about keeping him. I, yeah. I, again, I think they're insane for doing that. But hey, then this isn't even a conversation anymore. Yeah. 
But the fact that it is, that should also be making us feel better. Uh, it depends on who I just, I think the Bears would be idiots. No, no, no. I'm talking about it in this sense, right? It's a legitimate conversation, not just with me and you, not just within the Bears organization, nationally. We've known this has been like talked about. This is legit. It would not be a legit conversation if this were the Pittsburgh Steelers and it was Kenny Pickett and we had the number one overall pick. So when I say we could feel good, at least to that extent, it's like, well, they clearly feel like there is enough talent in this player that if this is deemed a can't miss guy that you can't pass on, that you're crazy if you don't pass on him. The fact that this is even a legitimate conversation says a lot about this kid right here, man. That's kind of how I look at it. Because if this is Mason Rudolph over there right now, he's gone already. Trubisky's gone already. Kenny Pickett, he's gone already. This is a legit convo they have though. So they clearly see something. I they don't clearly think see it something. Should be a legit convo. Yeah. But it's yeah, I guess it's it's being had still. Like it's yeah. just it's crazy to me. But uh uh S. Dresden, your quarterback, nose tack, one center, and at least one linebacker should be the absolute leaders of a locker room, in my opinion. No, facts. I mean, I know when we were here, that's pretty much what we had. I mean, you talk Ben, um, for the nose tackle, we'll, we call him just interior D tackle, was Cam. Then uh, center, Pouncey, uh, Law Dog was linebacker, or you had Debo. So, yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, Sean 0989. I agree. I don't want to give up on Kenny, but we are running out of time with guys like Cam and TJ. Can't afford to keep giving it another year. I mean, that's legitimate also, man. That's legitimate. If you mean to tell me we were getting Justin Herbert, I, I, I'd agree with you. We're, I mean, it's... F- like, you believe in Justin Herbert. I know I'm a Justin Herbert guy, but there's still people that don't think that he is what you kind of view him as. I'm talking like a top six or seven. Like, if, if it's Joe Burrow on the market right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. But we're bringing in guys that I have question marks about. Yeah. We're, we're talking about bringing in guys I got question marks about that I, again, don't necessarily – think will be guaranteed better options for us in 2024 yeah. more proven in certain aspects if you want to talk about a Kirk cousins or like a russell wilson but yeah. for 2024 it, i mean this is a game this is a league based off projections i know we could talk about proven and what they have done At the same time Kirk cousins is going to be you know 36 coming off this achilles we know russell mm-hmm. wilson's play is taking a little bit of dip he's up there in age justin fields i think there's still a lot of uncertainty around him despite all the upside so with Kenny and Mason, yeah, there's uncertainty there. But I, I, again, at the end of the season, said I was really interested to see if Mason can do more of this because that, in my opinion, is a top ten quarterback. And then Kenny Pickett, I don't need to go through that spiel again. But yeah, that's my thing. Unless you're getting Justin Herbert, unless you're getting uh, no. what other quarterback, you know, you can, you know, I don't even know. It'd be Burrow, Herbert. Uh, how you feeling about Hurt, if Hurts was available? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> this is my thing, man. Yeah, I might not like it. <laughs> I low key feel like Phils can get to Hurts level a lot faster than. Yeah. I think that that's very much attainable, bro. I do. So that's why I'm once again I'm like Phils is still way cheaper than that, and I think it can be better than that personally. But I do feel like it has to be coast up a lot better i think it does have to be in the right system right scheme the same way when i look at jalen hurts it's like bro you are in a just a great spot right now man and you play really well in that system sure i just think for justin Fields, it's similar i'm looking at him i'm watching him in chicago it's like yeah, you're in the pistol everything is pistol 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 this is like bro like let me see you in a different set let me see you in you know a little bit something that you might be more comfortable in where it's not this weird spacing where your reads are a little bit different or your footwork is a little bit different because your timing is off because it's not true shotgun, but you're not truly under center. That's a legitimate thing for me. Same way we taught Matt Canada and Kenny Pickett. Oh, man, I don't know how I feel about that. It's like I look at that. I'm like, bro, who the heck plays pistol this much? But that's part of why for me. I'm like, yo, if I could see you in this, but I know you still could check that box and I'm still seeing you check that box. That's why for me, I'm like, I lean more him. Now, in terms of Burrow and uh, Herbert, yeah, they clearly, yeah, that's different. He got a lot of work to get to that. 
A lot of work. But I do feel like it hurts. I ain't, yeah. To be personal, I'm like, bro, you ain't far off from that. You can catch that. Sean McCartney, hypothetically, if we don't get Fields or a big name quarterback, don't blame the team for trusting Kenny more than you. Not trashing Tomlin or nothing. Yeah. No, without a doubt, man. And you got to remember, it's their jobs on the line. Me and Deke could be wrong all we want. It ain't taking food off our plate. When they are wrong, man, them jobs, right? That's, hey, whole family, kids, hey, friends, tell them goodbye. We relocate. That's what happened when they're wrong. So, yeah, to an extent, man, they are going to operate with, you know, a different type of mindset than us at times because of that. So that's why it's like we can't fault them if, you know, they trust this player more versus this player because they're the ones that are putting countless hours into each of these dudes that come on this roster man so yeah we ain't tripping on it definitely not as dresden if the steelers had the bears pick would it even be a discussion stop playing shout to tg big facts again i don't even think it would be it should be a discussion for the bears so that's why i'm like i'm not i'm yeah. not seeing really like eye to eye on this like yeah. whoever has the number one pick if you don't have one of those like top six or seven guys mm -hmm. you should be taking caleb williams yeah it's just funny how you to outline both of these scenarios, though. What? In terms of, like, you like, bro, we don't need to move on from Kenny. And everybody's kind of like, bro, you tripping. You need to bring in something over here that can beat out Kenny that is better than Kenny. And then you're surprised at the same time where you're like, yeah, why would they even consider keeping Justin Fields over Caleb Williams? Bro, what? I would have been in with Caleb. And the other people's like, I just said, no, I, 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 I just bro. said we, we would draft Caleb yeah. over Kenny. We would. No, no, no. I'm saying for, for Justin Fields, you said for Justin Fields, it's crazy that they're even debating that. And yeah. I'm like, yo, it's still legit. A lot of people that are talking about it also, like, it's a legit debate, bro. It's legit. And, and I think I think a lot of it is based off the upside. I'll yeah. say that. But based off what they've both done in the league, Fields versus Pickett. Again, I'll be taking Pickett over Fields. And you could agree or disagree on that, yeah. whatever. But there's uncertainty with both. And, you know, both have left things out there on yeah. the field. Both have left more to be desired. But Absolutely. It's like, man, to what they've done up to this point, I don't, I don't think it's like... Mm -hmm. I don't think it's like that crazy of a difference. Again, in fact, I'm taking pick it over fields. Yeah. Shoot, I like it, baby. You know, I ain't tripping, man. Shoot, we about to be about that thing, man. I'm about to be on fake K, D. I ain't worried about the quarterback. We're on fake K, bro. It's fake K. Gorilla Mode, how many more years will it take Deontay to start getting respect as an all-time stealer? Wow. What you mean? Uh, his stats are already up there, and he's doing it with many quarterbacks. Big facts. Who doesn't respect? Y'all don't respect him as all-time? Oh, uh, no. Am I off? Y'all. Oh, don't tell me. All-time Steelers. Come, come on. on. We, we've had really good receivers. Like, Dude, look at his numbers. Have you seen DJ's numbers all here, time. bro? All-time. Just DJ's numbers is talking about all-time. He flirting with it here. Aren't Juju's numbers pretty good, too? He's. I'm trying. He's flirting with all-time, bro. Hey, Pittsburgh-wise? I'll say this. Deontay's pace for, you know, his first, how many years has he been here? For like five years? Five years now? Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's a good pace. It stacks up there with a lot of receivers that have done it here before. But I mean, you're you're talking Heinz Ward, you're talking AB, Star Wars, Swan, even Santonio San Holmes. Look, 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 look. We're not saying that he's a better player than those guys. But in terms of the all time rank, it's like, bro, is he's gonna finish in terms of steal? It's kind of like the convo Heinz Ward and AB, right? Who's the better player? We're gonna say AB, but Heinz got the better Steeler stats, and uh, he does. Does he? Yeah, he still he has all of them stats. Definitely bro. not per game. No, the per game anything that's per game or a singular year is A B. All time stuff is Hans. But it's just in Pittsburgh. No different. We talked Pastures, right? Debo and uh and Peasy. Debo got more sacks as a stealer, but Peasy got more sacks career wise. So we ain't saying that they, you know, he better than them dudes, but his numbers here in Pittsburgh. They gonna be up there if he keep you know the trajectory that he's on, stays healthy and stuff, man. He's a volume catch guy. He's a volume yard guy. Like, yeah. Uh, hey, man, y'all is crazy. He's giving all time love. Oh my god. Oh. Not, not over those five guys. <laughs> like he's he's gonna have to do some special stuff. Do, do we do? But is he at least like we talk about him? Not over those five. Like he might be in the yeah top six, seven, eight. Like type I, of category. Yeah, when you said San Antonio, I'm like, bro, dude, all right, he got to be starting to come up somewhere. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, then you got like a Plexico, but he wasn't here that long. Right. Juju. 
Like, yeah, I can't even believe we've thrown Juju in that mix. Juju had a run here, though, bro. What, Louie Lips? Shout out to Louie. He had a run here, too. A dope run. Sanders? God, yeah. I mean, Deontay's in that mix yeah. of, of those second-tier guys. Yeah. Just off the top of my head. I like it, man. I like it. All right. Well, shout out to Deontay. Bro. All right, we ain't talking no more Deontay. All right. It's I'm going to get my toes in the sand. Yancey Thigpen. Shout out to Yancey, too. Shout out to Yancey. <sighs> Martavis. Yeah. Mike Wallace. Some dudes, man. Yeah. If Don Deontay He's just in that combo, sticks bro. around. Yeah. Uh he I mean he he might even be six or seven right now. He might. He in the combo, bro. I'm looking at it. Because Mike Wallace He had a he had a strong start, but didn't end too well here. Yancey Thigpen, Plaxico, <laughs> Buddy Dow, dude from the 50s. Yeah. Throwing him in the mix. Yeah, I'm a roll with DJ. <laughs> I'm going to roll with DJ, bro. I like it. I like it. Okay. It's a fair uh, It's a fair uh, comment. I'm, yeah. I'm wrapping my head respect. around Give it. Give him some respect, man. Just, For his first, whatever, five, six seasons. I actually did a video on that, I think, a year or two ago, where if you look at his stats – they he stacks up really well with the all timers. Like out the gate, he... but there's a reason we feel the way we do whenever you bring up Deontay versus a Heinz Ward and AB. There's a reason for that. <laughs> Those drops have killed him. We only keep it a positive. We only talk positive. Uh, coolness kills. Highlights don't show anything but good plays, and not the bad. Of course, he will look good to us. He might be talking fields. Yeah. Um, I was actually hoping that he wasn't talking fields because that was part of why it makes me also lean fields is because when I pull up Kenny Pickett highlight and I pull up Justin Fields highlight, one is a lot longer, unfortunately, than the other one. So it's like, yo, at least if you're going to show me the good play, show me the good plays. That's my only issue with it. I do get what you're saying, though. The highlights, yeah, that's why you can't just watch highlights. But it's like, bro, if your highlight take 20 minutes and your highlight take five minutes, who do you think is creating more highlights? But anywho, man, we're not about to go and get back into this again, man. It is 6.53, and this is going to be it for today's show, man. It was a vibe, though. It was a vibe because the boy going on vacay, all right? And Deke want me to stay here because Deke be flying in and out of Texas. I ain't flying in out of Texas, okay? I'm trying to go, stay, and then come back, okay? Go, stay, and then come back, all right? So, if that's cool with you, I'm trying to go. If that's cool with you, if that's cool with you, I had a vibe. It's been a vibe, bro. Yeah. It's been a vibe, bro. It's been an absolute vibe. So, yeah, man, with that being the case, we do appreciate the heck out of y'all, man, from the heart. And uh, we will be back uh, next Friday. Not this Friday. Next Friday. Because tomorrow's Friday. I almost mixed my dates up. But next Friday, we got y'all. All right, we'll have a little bonus Friday show, man. But um, yeah, I'll put the link up. Other than that, though, yeah, no shows Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. None of that next week, all right? Actually, lucky like last two weeks. But we'll talk more about that at a later time. Either way, though, we appreciate the heck out of y'all, man. Hit that like button one time for Deke. Hit that subscribe button one time for Rosie. And uh, y'all stay safe out there. And until next time, baby. Peace.